Everybody, welcome back to the 10th floor. It's me, Matt. Hey, everybody. And that's Cat. What's going on, everybody? Yes, I am. <laughs> hey, 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 get on out of that waiting room, everybody. Climb on into the elevator. We're headed all the way up to the 10th floor. Oh, welcome, everybody. It's not just us, you know. As always, we're joined by our dear friends. Yes. Chandra, of course. Who are we getting chummy with today? Chandra there, she was she she's always on snacks, is what Chandra is. So she shows up before everybody else to set up the spread. Mm hmm And what's nice is nobody's like, oh my god, everything bagels. I prefer plain. You know, people just take what she brings and I love it. Mm -hmm. I love mm -hmm. it. I love it. Cindis is here. Hi, Cindis. Hi. Hey, hey, hey. Rochelle. Hello, Rochelle. Uh David. David's back with us. Kelly is here. Hello, Kelly. Kai Wan. Oh my god, everybody just piling in now that I clicked the broadcast button. <laughs> oh, go figure. <laughs> well, what do you know? It's like they got a notification that we're on. <laughs> uh, send us David and Kelly. Hello, 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 everybody. Howdy, 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 partner. Howdy, ho. Hey, we're going to go to uh, Nixon Falls for another hoedown. <laughs> Catch up with, uh, with, with Phyllis, who I imagine moved back home. <laughs> I would if I were her. No one paying no no attention. <laughs> She's like, but no friends here. I should go back to where you know where my book club was. Back out in the tano. Maybe she rebuilt the tano. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Melissa is showing up. Stephanie, hello, Queen of the South. Bridget, look at that. Everybody's just piling in. Like I said, it's so exciting to see. Yay! Hey, hey, hey. You know, it's 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 good. So, um, what I've noticed is that um, the um renewed enjoyment of General Hospital. Has not only reinvigorated what we're seeing on our scene on our screens, but it's also reinvigorated the fan base. Our videos, Ma, have mm -hmm. never been more popular. I know, and we know what we are about that. So appreciative grateful. and happy and grateful. Yes, yeah, yeah. So it seems as though you know people, uh, fans, uh, reinvigorated fan base, interested in, in in you know exposing themselves to to more gh during the week you know when it comes to reaction podcasts things like that out there so you know we're welcome hello everybody new listeners and watchers alike hi hello everybody hey 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 genie's here too hello hello hi we're trying <laughs> um since this brought breaking get a guest on here uh, trying well you know we're working I, I constantly reach out you know, every couple of weeks, I, I I send some some feelers out to see see what what bites. Uh, yeah. You know, usually when we're centered around some sort of event, we have a little more success. Yeah, because we're able to to kind of piggyback on that live interaction. Yes, mm -hmm. it's very helpful. It's super helpful. Hi, hi, David. Uh, Jeannie's here. Hey, Jeannie. Uh, it sent us brought bacon wraps, and so that's nice. Everybody enjoy those. Bacon wraps. <laughs> I like it. Um, and then um, uh, Melissa says that um, Chandra's the snack mom, and I think that's correct. Mm. She's just yeah. a greeter, you know? She's a great greeter. A perfect first face to see when you walk up here uh, into the waiting room on the 10th floor. Just mm -hmm. like all of those people who are about to enjoy a basketball game get such a warm welcome. Absolutely. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Um, Kelly says, guess what I have? What do you have, Kelly? I can't guess because I don't have any clues. She has ice cream. You have ice cream? Is it, Last yeah, hour. Is it ice cream? <laughs> um, is, it, is it a Zoom event that you're coming to, that you're going to later? Oh, now that's right up Kelly's alley right there. <laughs> yeah. She's Zoom queen. <laughs> I mean, what's your, what's your Zoom weekend going on uh, this week, Kelly? Oh, cool. What a, what a just a fun oh, existence, you know? How fun. Like, if you didn't live in that massive house with a camper and that expensive husband of yours, you'd be able to watch Zooms every week, too. Me? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Probably. <laughs> I don't know how expensive they are, honestly. No, they're, like, they're, like, only, like, 20, 25 bucks or something like that. So, you know, if it's in your budget, it's pretty easy to keep up with, I think. Oh, sure. I you know, so. you can exchange that kind of money with pretty much pretty quickly, you know? Hey, Blink. Don't go get, don't go get a super expensive combo right now. <laughs> yeah, fourteen dollar uh, <laughs> Big Mac meal. Yeah, don't That's go just in that. California. Yeah. Don't worry if you're still making, you know, twelve bucks an hour or whatever the national minimum wage is. You have nothing to worry about. And you could cut back on your Starbucks. That'll give you savings right there. You know, you know, if people always equate, you know, Starbucks drink less Starbucks. You know, it's, it's goodness gracious, is it really that expensive now? Because um, it's, it's such an old thing for somebody to say. You know, don't spend five dollar uh, coffee. Uh, 
a, a Vente drink right now is five cents away from being six dollars. Okay, so it's still about a five dollar coffee. It, a Vente is five ninety five. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's just for a regular latte. You know, for for a regular, yeah. Yeah. Not yeah. like a cheapy, cheapy. Of course, you know, you can get some plain old black coffee for a couple of bucks. <laughs> nobody goes to Starbucks for that. No, no, nobody wants. To, I mean, when so you you know you know what. I, I've had a lot of jobs in my life, and so I also spent some time at Starbucks. It's so funny because the last podcast I talked about working at an ice cream factory, and now here I am about to talk about Starbucks. Uh, yeah, he was also, barista for a minute. Was a barista. I mean, goodness gracious, I've worked in video stores. I've worked in media stores. I've worked in water filtration, waste removal. Um, gosh, I've got a, a bevy of experience. You guys remember a store in the mall? It's 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 long gone now. FYI. FYI. FYE. F -Y -E. Yeah. I there. Yeah, I work there. I work there. Blink only drinks well, Corinthos coffee, and that's a good choice. Yeah. That's some fine Colombian bean. Remember when you worked in a shoe store and no one went in there and oh, you gosh, wondered how yes. the hell they were open? Yeah, I don't know how the, you know, some of these businesses just persist. And that was that that was the shoe store that was right next to the Dell Direct Store kiosk in which I was selling computers. Yeah. You did that too. I also sold cell phones. My goodness. I, 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 it's not until I'm sitting in this chair right now, kind of thinking about it, about just the vast amount of experience that doesn't wind up on my resume because it's irrelevant. I don't know, man. I think you might've had like 40 jobs. <laughs> it, you know, my, uh, truly, you know, I mean, son of some of, I mean, gosh, I recruited for an acting school. Um, um, mm -hmm. I was a tour guide at the Winchester mystery house. I should write a memoir. Uh, <laughs> and you guys, he was good at that well, the Winchester Wister. I loved it. I went on his tour. I loved it. I was I was really good at the tour and really Very bad good. at being on time. So some of, some of, some of my failures were self imposed, but other others were not. A lot of them mm -hmm. weren't. I mean, my most my most grandiose failures were not of my own choosing, um, or my own fault. Um, and I think that's just kind of a, a consequence of being in my age group. I think a lot of my peers have experienced like the 40 job thing. Sure. Sure. I don't sure. Know. <laughs> uh, Melissa suggests that I become an Avon lady. Avon? I did that twice. I'm going to run into Edward Scissorhands. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Cindy's <laughs> remembers FYE. Uh, Jeannie's never been to Starbucks and you know, Hey, high five to Jeannie. Kudos for that. Just make your coffee at home. That's what I do. I get Cafe I, I de Oya coffee from Costco. It's this big bag of Mexican coffee that has like cinnamon and sugar already in it. And you just brew that sucker up, add a little bit of cream and. It's delicious. <laughs> Do you guys buy beans and mo and then um, grind them yourself? No, it's pre-ground. We don't we don't have a reliable grinder. Um, but you know, oh, okay. hey, it, it, it really if it was up to if it was if it was up to people who aren't me uh, that live in this house, we would have an appliance for everything. An appliance, okay. a tool. We would have a, a mixer, a juicer, a, a, a blender. Um, a, 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 name it. You would have it. We would have it. You know, a special teapots that only steep green tea for a minute and a half before it automatically dumps and all kinds of really fancy really cool stuff that exists out there that maybe like you'd find in the cabinets of carly's kitchen or in the quarter main house quarter main house you know that sunroom that sunroom off the kitchen there that's a beautiful set it really is it and is really that's utilize lovely. It now. They really use it a lot. In fact, I'm watching right now. I have it on silent, of course. I'm re-watching. I have Saturday, Friday show on, and I see Granny and beautiful Brooklyn, Brooklyn sitting in that very place that I'm talking about. I know. That was part of the setup. Was that set up when, when the Q house was up when we toured? No. Oh, no. It was the foyer in the living room. The foyer in the staircase and the living room. Yeah. So so when they, when they set up the Q house, they pretty much set up the foyer in the living room or the living room in the sunroom. Mm -hmm. Is pretty much how that works, and so I guess they got living in sunroom up right now. Who is um, Diane Weist? W e i s t. Diane Weist. I don't know who that is. Melissa says that uh, that's who Matt reminds me of. Diane Weist. I don't know who Diane Weist is. Tell I don't me. Eat. Tell me, Melissa. <laughs> I don't eat. I don't eat. Um. 
uh, why do you think they're giving to him Brooklyn? That's stupid. I'm loving the intro. I don't know what that means, Kaiwan. I guess you're not enjoying Brooklyn in, in, in Chase. That's my that's my um interpretation. I of tell that. you who I am enjoying hmm. when it comes to the circle of Brooklyn. I just love Brooklyn with Lois. I just love Brooklyn Lois with Granny. In her subdued maid's outfit. She's the maid <laughs> of honor, right? She's gonna be the maid of honor. Yeah. And she yeah, just, with her and she was just up there looking like a grandma. She looked like that was a mother of the that was that was mother of the bride conservativeness. Oh my gosh. And Brooklyn was so funny. She's like, I don't even know how you're gonna do your nails if you wear that. <laughs> Got it. Uh, Diane Weist is is the Avon lady from Edward Edward Scissorhands. Oh, well, I could totally see her face and her voice is yes. so distinctive, right? Right, right. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. I just didn't know the name. Um, but you know, there's a lot of actors out there that you know, you know, you've seen forever. Um, and a lot of these actors recognize that too. Like you've seen me on so many stuff, but you don't know my name. Mm -hmm. Um, <clears throat> I had experience of that when I was selling computers at the Dell Direct store. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> I ran into an actor, a prominent actor that nobody knows the name of, but definitely recognizes the face. And he's this really big, muscular dude with the kind of a really like messed up, pockmarked face. Um, he's usually bald. He's been in so many things. I could name it. He's been Klingons on Star Trek. He's been Shao Kahn in a in a in Mortal Kombat movies. Um, he was in the Terminator movie and got killed by Arnold and the uh, stole his leather jacket. Um, and he's just been in so many things, and people know this face. And if I were to show you his face, which I don't have the capability of, you would go, "Oh yes, I know exactly who this 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 strangely uh -huh. weird looking man is." Uh -huh. And his name is Brian Thompson. It's such a plain name that you would never yeah. think that this that this beef action stud who could throw you across the room and plays just villain after villain after villain. When he walked up to your kiosk, did you he recognize was, him? He, so he didn't walk up to the kiosk. He was actually chilling, talking to a couple of his friends in the mall. Uh-huh. Um, uh, just outside of the kiosk and they were just having a conversation and stuff and I saw him over there and I'm like, oh my god, that is that dude. Uh -huh. I've seen him as a Klingon. I've seen him in Charmed. I've seen him in Terminator. I've seen him in all of these things. And so I'm like, I'm my mother's son, right? Of course. <laughs> Am I not going to approach the person? Of course I'm going to approach the person. He wasn't swarmed. It's not like when we went to that bar and everybody was wanting to talk to uh, the Tracer guy. Hartley. Yeah. Justin Hartley. You know, like that wasn't the time to be like, right. hey, you know, but this this was a time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I snuck over there and I, um, I I did interrupt their conversation because I had to. <laughs> Otherwise, I wasn't going to get my interaction. Um, right. <clears throat> but I was very, you know, meek about it. And I was sheepish. And I was just yeah. like, oh, hey, hi, I'm so sorry for, I just want to say, you know, I, 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 I just want to say I recognize you and I'm, I'm a big fan. And it goes, oh, you're a big fan. And I'm like, yeah, you know, I, I seen you in this, that, and this, and that, and this, and that. And he goes, oh, wow, you really do. You really do. You really are a fan. Like, I guess most people don't know his library like I do. Uh, and I shook his hand and all that. And he told me to visit his website and all that nonsense. And it wasn't like some long thing. We didn't have lunch or anything. Mm -hmm. But. I don't know. It was just a fun little experience when I ran into that dude. You know, it was a fun experience too, is when, when we talked to Dominic and you mentioned what you had seen him in from forever ago. Yeah. He was Which in Stargate, was... Stargate Atlantis. Yeah. 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 And Dominic, is, he said, oh, I did that a long time ago. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I didn't even realize that he's done other Stargates since then. He was in Stargate universe as well, which would have been a much more recent reference to make to him. But yeah, he recalled doing that. And he's like, yeah, I was really sick that day. And the director said, use it. Yeah. <laughs> and he could like barely even function. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Kelly. Kelly Public Ovarius donating $10 through the Super Chat function with the message last week Zoomed with Evan and Eden. Next week, Cameron Matheson. Oh, I saw that there's going to be a Zoom with... Uh... Ever, yeah, there's going to be a Zoom. Yeah, with Cameron with Matheson, I guess. Yeah. Is it just Cameron? Yeah. I guess yeah, she would have said and somebody else if it was more than just Cameron Matheson. So, so yeah, I guess he's got a Zoom going on next week. We got to get cool. Kelly to like write up uh, reactions or something or do a little video for us that we can just kind of throw up um, on the channel as um, 
additional content from all of, you know, the time that she spends watching this stuff. She's probably got a lot of really fun stories to share every week. Mm-hmm. Excuse me. I uh, just didn't know that Dom Zamprunga was in, um, Zamprunga was in Stargate. Check it out. Just Google it. Thumbs up. Tells you the episodes, too. Mm-hmm. Just Cameron Matheson. Uh, Blink says that Cameron Matheson is such a hottie, and you know who agrees? Nina. Yeah, right now she does, huh? Oh, oh my boy, gosh. does she. Hey, oh folks. Oh, my if, gosh. If you didn't check out our Thursday late night tonight where we, we kind of, you know, talked about it at length, there, hug up. Check that out when we're done here. Uh, but we're definitely going to talk about it a little bit again because we, now we, we, we've we seen the aftermath as well. Yeah. And we've seen, we've seen Nina continue to step further into her ditch. I know. It's really she is, interesting. I, I think Nina is about to give Heather a, a run for her money on cuckoo-ness. <laughs> she might. It's no, coming. I, I, it's it's, coming. It's, it's, it's. it's it's a thing. It's really a thing because um, Nina is still very focused on Carly. Carly is not mm -hmm. focused on Nina. Carly's got much bigger things going on in her life now than the little gnat of Nina that's been kind of an annoyance. Yeah, she's like, she really, she's just slapping at her. In, in comparison, you know, and it's not a knock against Nina, you know, it's just from Carly's perspective, you know, mm -hmm. it's just this little annoying gnat. Because in, in, in comparison to what she's dealing with right now, what Nina has brought into her life is nothing. It's old news now. It's old news, and it really, like, oh, you know, it, it, Jason was gone for two years because he was trying to keep, from my point of view, himself out of prison, because she doesn't know that it's actually her. Um, right. Sonny, you know, is, is, is spiraling off of this whole situation. Jason is back. She doesn't really know what's going on. Like, all of this stuff is so much heavier than Drew went to jail for six months. Right. You know? It's yes. so much heavier and, and so much bigger and has such a uh, larger rippling impact through Carly's it's, life. It's interesting to me. It's interesting to me that Cameron's delivery right now is very, is the same as his positive Drew. Uh -huh. with his, you know, how, how exaggerated he is yeah. with some of the things he says. Yes. Usually... It's when he has some positive things to say. Mm -hmm. But now his delivery is kind of that way, but it's negative. But then it's also not as flaily. You know, he's not like, and this yeah. is like, the da, da, da. you know, he kind of keeps himself yeah. a little more centered. But the passion yes. is still there when it comes to what he's saying about this terrible person that he just hates. Mm -hmm. But also, I hate you so much, it started to turn on itself. Exactly. One of those furrow circle hatreds. I know. Ones that you really only really experience in television. I don't know. They're painting they're, the the new writers have decided that Drew is gonna go off his rocker. <laughs> Along um, with Nina. Yeah, off your yeah, rocker. Yeah. I don't know how destructive he's going to become because clearly he doesn't want to like blow up Carly's life. Like that's not his goal or his intention or anything uh -huh. like that. But when it comes to just like what he's up to, the decisions that he makes, all of that might be a little less favorable to the community as time and goes on. And he's not really wanting to blow up <laughs> Nana's life anymore either. No, no, no. He and just wants to complicate the hell out of it. Like, 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 like we said on Thursday, um, they had this energy within them, Drew mm -hmm. and Nina, that you could even say maybe was really established with how angry he got at her without being able to express it in the way that he might have been able to if she was a different person. Like we talked about that, you know, in a little bit of detail on Thursday. Go back to there. We don't have to bring it up again today. But with this little pocket of, of, of energy that is just in there that you can't release. It's just battle and hate and battle and argument until you <laughs> find a way to pop that bubble. And the disdain is still there, and you still don't like that person. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to, like, the active war, mm -hmm. it's just a little less to it. There's a little less gumption in there because that pocket of, of pent-up energy has been released. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Mm -hmm. What does the future hold? You know, and I really thought, so, um, so you know, Diane went to Nina about purchasing. Yes. The, the half a metro court back. Right. Okay. So looks like Nina's willing to sell it. 
she's kind of always been invested in only words, you know? Right. Um, and she knows exactly who wants to purchase and she knows exactly why he wants to purchase to give it back mm -hmm. to Nate, give it back to Carly. So I'm, I'm glad that Diane didn't go to her with some half truths, mm -hmm. but Diane typically doesn't do that. Well, maybe, so, maybe Nina will find a way to get a lot of money out of him for it. And, but yeah, well, she could just for the sake of doing it, but you know, just to, for the sake of, bless you. <laughs> goodness just for the sake of, of, of getting it you know getting but she doesn't need the money no she doesn't need the money and really when it comes down to it it's like you know oh, i'm gonna charge he is supposed to be rolling in dough yeah when, and, and when it comes down to it these 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 characters you know i lost five million dollars because the sec took it from me i'm gonna charge nina twice the asking price of this building that really has no overall bearing or impact on the characters because it's their fake characters with their fake money um, if the story doesn't call for them to be destitute because of this, then they're not going to be. And so it's not a real consequence that I don't feel like the audience could really truly invest themselves in. Because they're not really invested in their money anyway. You don't watch them like on days with Eric balancing his checkbook in 2024. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, we, we, we're not usually subjected to something like that where we watch them mm -hmm. pay their phone bill unless it's part of the story where they can't. Or unless it's part of well, the story the where I can I easily can afford a truck. Yeah, it's good advice. Um, but we're not talking about them quite yet. <laughs> well, we yeah, not them. We talked about her and Lois. We didn't even finish talking about Lois, by the way, because no, we the didn't. whole the whole con the whole thing the the the, the let's just go back because I want to. Um, the clothes, the outfit. Mm -hmm. All right, and then, mm -hmm. and then and then um and then Brooklyn is like, Ma, this isn't your style. What are you mm -hmm. gonna do with your nails? Mm -hmm. All of these things where she was like, I recognize who you are as a person. And I know what your fashion and flair is. And I don't want you to hold yourself back. Exactly. I yeah. just loved it. It was a very like loving moment to her mom, I think. It was. Just really shows that she really understands who her mom is. And I know this is like this like low hanging branch stuff. Like everybody knows that Lois is about her nails and what she wears. Mm -hmm. But she still, you know, gave it to her. Yeah. Brooklyn's trying. Brooklyn's trying real hard to be just a good person. She's missing yes. the she's missing the beat a little bit. A little bit. But it's fun to see. It's fun to see her try. Mm -hmm. And it's also an interesting little character trait, too, because previously she hadn't been so gracious and nice. And so, yeah, it might take a little bit of practice to get it right. Do you know that Rena does her own nails? Oh, does she? Yes. Just sitting there painting them. That's she, cool. Rena does her own nails, and she comes up with the designs based on what the character is going to wear. She needs to know that in advance a little bit. What, and then she designs nails around Lois's outfit. Well, that's cool. It is very cool. <laughs> I've also noticed, I've also noticed where there on a couple of occasions where another actress, one of them was Maxie, okay. had some, uh, I wouldn't say flamboyant nails, but nails that were, uh, uh, caught my attention. Uh -huh. They were not just plain. They weren't just one color. They were they were Lois nails. Mm -hmm. I saw Maxie with a set of them on a couple of weeks ago, and I thought Rena did her nails during downtime. <laughs> They're just chilling and just like <laughs> They're chilling and she did her nails. You can tell. That's cool. That's cool. That's good a little <laughs> notice. That's good a little notice. Um next time you notice something like that, Ma, let mm -hmm. me know. And then I can like try to get a picture of it. And then I can tweet it and we'll be like really cool because we will be the first person to like notice something or talk about something rather than reacting to what people I have noticed try. and talked about you don't have to i'm just saying it would be an interesting thing for me to to be an influencer sure <laughs> <laughs> oh anyway super fun i'm i'm I, i'm looking forward to this wedding i think it's going to be a little kooky Oh, I think it's. Gonna be I think little. it's. I think we're we're not going for heavy dramatics in it. I don't think. I think mm -hmm. we're gonna have moments of like impassioned love speeches. You know, their their vows are gonna be beautiful, but I think it's gonna be a goofy quarter mania affair. I think it's gonna be a goofy quarter mania affair too. It's gonna be there at the house. It's gonna be goofy. It's gonna be quarter mania, quarter and then mania. Uh, and I and I don't think anything horribly wrong is gonna go wrong. I think it's gonna be beautiful. I think and the then, yeah. The and then after that, uh, 
that horrible disease is going to come down and, right. and grab Gregory. Yeah, so the absolute worst thing that could happen at the wedding itself would be Gregory collapsing. But, yes. you know, I guess it depends on the uh, the tone that we want for this. we got to assume that all the quarter mains are going to be there, including Leo. You know, mm. is the show going to... And missing Ned. Leo? I don't know. Is he going to be back on by then? I hope so. He's hope missing so right now. Ned's just not know. on. No, uh, Wally Kurth had been sharing some concert photos that he went to. Not one that he was performing in, but one that he went to. So maybe he's just enjoying himself, or had been. Yeah. You know, when it's coming off of some sort of vacation soon. Mm -hmm. I guess, I guess. Uh, Chandra reminds everybody that the Super Chats are open. And you can contribute to the show if you want to. Kelly already has. Don't let her do it alone. <laughs> if you don't want to, I mean, you know, if you can. I'm just saying, you know, don't feel the pressure. Just remember that it's an option. Mm -hmm. uh, Gregory won't collapse, suggests Melissa. He'll kiss Tracy. It'll be a happy affair. But he already kissed Alexis, so if Alexis sees that, then she's going to be like... Well, she already said that she can't escort. She cannot. She cannot hold him. Hmm. Well, maybe Alexa she won't care. That. Then. Maybe she won't care then. Maybe she won't. I, don't know. I mean, Tracy she said that she was going to be busy preparing for her court date to be a lawyer again. Indeed. So he's. He you said know, she he's was going to be busy doing that. Then I guess she'll just make out with Tracy. They'll just make out with so, Tracy. It'll be fun to see since since um, Brooklyn pretty much told her mom. Just be yourself. Well, <laughs> I want to. How far is she gonna lean into being herself? It's well, be I mean, she, it's, it's, it's something really low cut. And Brooklyn's like, okay, not that far, ma. <laughs> not that far. I guess it's Grandpa Car uh, Carrillo is coming. Grandpa Carrillo will be there. I saw. I saw a picture of the actor that they. Um, yeah, I guess Lois's dad's gonna show up. See, it's gonna be a kooky. If I remember when her ma it's showed be up. Kooky. Where I think it was. Around, I hope right? he's a mobster. It'll be beautiful. You know, John Travolta's sister. Yeah. <laughs> the one that fell foul with the Russian mafia or whatever. That was so lame. It sure was. That was some lameness right there. Uh, Cindy suggests that they will have Gregory pass peacefully sometime after seeing Chase get married. That'd be nice. Like, instead of, like, watching him break down and deteriorate one day, they just don't have the character wake up. I like that better. That might be sweet. That might be, because, listen, like, we, we watched Max Gale play deterioration for, like, two years. We sure did. I know it's a little while ago, but it was still recent. Yes. No. They don't have to play ALS that slow because ALS actually can, it's different for everybody, mm -hmm. but it can go on like a, a super fast pace. Yeah. And. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, I hope BLQ's grandpa knows hat daddy, says Melissa. <laughs> well, that'd be fun. <laughs> They could just show up and just start playing music together. I'd love to see uh, Marshall play a little more clarinet. I would too. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, I should I write down TJ. I don't know. I think Daddy's going to blow in the wind soon too. I don't know. Just, you know, I mean, it's there's just speculation galore. It's entirely possible that they just didn't renew the contract because they didn't have long-term plans. Uh, but that doesn't necessarily mean they're planning on eliminating the well, character. I like the way I wrote it. Yeah, I wrote easy. it the way I wrote it is I want Hat Daddy to go on a tour. Mm -hmm. Him and Stella. Him and Stella are going to go on a tour, and they're going to and they're going to help individuals that had the same plight as him. Yeah, I love it. It's it's possible that they could do something like that. Stella seems and then to be sticking around a little back bit. In town. He's going to swing back in town. He's going to make dinner occasionally. Hey, baby Peely! I think this is the first time I've seen your name in here. Hello. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome to the 10th floor. Welcome. Welcome. We're still on the elevator. I never got us out of it. We never narrated our escape. I never what? said you look to the left and find the uh, hospital is a little bit empty now that everybody's feeling healthy again. Mm-hmm. And you look to the right. Even Heather's back in Pentonville. Even Heather's out of there. You look to the right. You can see um, Heather being escorted out to be given back to Pentonville. as she's like, hey, stud muffin. For some reason, I'm hot for you because you look like Kevin, who I or uh, Ryan, who I hate. <laughs> <laughs> and they decided to get. Remember, they said we we're going to send her to the. Uh, they were going to send her to the West Coast. In fact, they yeah. said they were going to send her to San Quentin. Yeah. Didn't they? Was it her or somebody else? 
No, it was her. They were going to send her to San Quentin. But um, ultimately, though, they changed the hip, and I think they changed those plans back to back to They Pitt, did. Because she, you know, I guess in theory isn't so dangerous. Um, I don't know. Because, you know, clearly, clearly, the war between Portia and Laura is about to pop off. Well, Portia's going to lose. Probably. But that doesn't mean that she's not going to be, you know, fight vehemently. Yeah. So we, well, you know, we, we yeah. even got her talking to like Curtis about it and stuff, you know, like what if they, uh -huh. da -da -da -da. and then Laura and Kevin kind of start, seem to start to be leaning toward the side of maybe we can rehabilitate. You know, Kevin didn't say let her out, but his stance they wasn't as They are both harsh. leaning toward that. They are both, and, 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 and Kevin, did you not learn anything from Ryan? But the cold you, poisoning. What he was saying about how he did sort of facilitate some of the things that he wound up doing, of course he didn't have the foresight to know that Ryan was going to go off the rails that hard. No. But at the same time, he did know that he had capability of it. Uh, yeah, uh, maybe there's a little hubris there because he was able to successfully lock up Ryan for a long time. Mm -hmm. I don't think he was drug dead the whole time. No. He was in a straight jacket and then he clobbered Kevin. Yep. Swapped switch. clothes. Yeah. And now you can tell which is which because one is missing a hand. Yes, you can. <laughs> hey, Melinda. Welcome to the show, Melinda. Hello. Oh, baby Peely heard about us from her mother. Oh, you should always listen to your mama. Yeah, she's right. She's right. <laughs> We're here for a good time. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, goodness gracious. It was the Night Star Manning's Hope and Cold Eye. I don't know. Let's talk about something else. Uh, let's see here. It's a men's prison. Oh, is it San Quentin a men's prison? Yes, it is. Well, I guess she can't go there then. I should know. It's, I mean, I, I, didn't, I didn't like research it or anything, but San Quentin is a no space away from me. <laughs> San Quentin is, when, when I used to go to my grandparents' house when I was a little girl, you could see San Quentin from uh, 101. Yeah. Highway 101. You drive by by it. Yes, yeah, we passed by many times, many, 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 many times. Thank you, Melissa, for your donation to Super Chat as well. You guys are amazing. Amazing. So yeah. So no, it don't. In fact, I know a prison guard there. Yeah. I have a friend that is a guard there. He watched. He watched. He watched Peterson, right? He watches Peterson. Yes. I said, "Dang, can't you drown that fool in the toilet or something?" Um, Mark, um, and, and my friend Mark told me, no, that, that's, that's, that's ill-advised. Yeah, they frown upon those actions. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. Uh, Michelle, hey, Michelle, welcome. It's okay that you're late. We're always late, too. And but, you know, gosh, but since we start the show, we, we don't miss any of it, though. So, I guess we, we have that advantage. <laughs> Blink's like, why the fuck, why the f would you be uh, sending me to um, men's prison? <laughs> I, th I think that was just a failure on research. I think it was they too. <laughs> they didn't verify that there's no women in San Quentin. <laughs> it happens. But if they want to send her to California. I'm sure we have a women's prison here ready oh, for her. Definitely. Um, <laughs> I can't even say like I I lived in California and I passed this prison and never really I never really thought about is this only men or women. You know, and so if I were supervising the writing team and that line came by me, I don't think I would necessarily have been triggered to say, could you verify that? No, not necessarily. You know, I, I and when you think of and and when you think of West Coast prison, I think probably San Quentin is the one that comes to mind for most people. I mean, it's the most. Alcatraz, but you can't send her out there. No, because that <laughs> one's not active now. Now you just got tours, you know, <laughs> we should have we should have let we should have let the indigenous people just keep it. Well, they sure took it over for a while in the seventies. Yeah, don't you remember that, don't you? I do, and there's still, you know, there's remnants of of, of the fact that they were there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I went on that tour. I yeah, I wonder if I don't even know if San Quentin does tours anymore. I guess mm. they do. Sabrina Not suggests. San Quentin. Yeah, Alcatraz. I don't even know if they do. Sabrina I suggests do. that San Quentin does house women. Maybe it does. Well, I, don't I don't know. I didn't do any research. Look, look, what do we say, Ma? Say it for me. Don't come don't here come for the news. Don't come to us for the facts. <laughs> don't come here for the news, everybody. We got plenty to say. We don't know nothing. Nope. Don't know schnit. Don't know schnit. 1930s style writing soap operas uh, would make it seem like it is kind of feels like it's the 30s and soaps. Interesting. 
Uh, my uncle, says Melissa, was one time Dr. Kevorkian's prison guard. Wow. That's the assisted suicide guy, right? Yes. Which I think now in states, in certain states, is legal. Yes, it is. In I watched, certain states. I watched a show called Three Body Problem, in which one of the characters, spoiler alert, uh, one of the characters went through a voluntary process like that, and they had it set up so he had to answer yes in five different ways before uh, before the, the chemicals sure. were pumped i'm not sure but i think either oregon or washington here on the west coast has that i feel like it's oregon one of them has that i feel like it's I've oregon heard of that. i don't know i don't know you know i mean you feel as you feel about it we're not going to get too deeply into it but you know i think there are certain times and conditions in which everything you know it makes sense it's, it's it makes sense a sensible choice <laughs> like you know the pet, Sad. you know uh let's see let's just turn spoon island into a giant penal colony like australia says melissa <laughs> maybe that's maybe yeah maybe the warden from uh from fittenville they already got a dungeon even i know right there's already a dungeon over there that dastardly warden maybe is the new owner of spoon island the one that we apparently don't know is kidnapped. Who's the owner of Spoon Island is? No. The new writers just get that, that just sitting back there on the back pocket. Yeah, they're holding on to that one. Just waiting. Yeah, they are. Just waiting. They're like, we're not using those sets right now anyway. They're expensive to put up. And we use real fire and the torches and propane costs. So we're just going to. I tell you what, you guys, that set, when you, I think it looks terrific on television. Mm -hmm. But that set in person, as janky as all get out, looks like it belongs in a high school it really well, does. It really it does. does. Lighting does a lot to that thing. Uh, they even admit it too. They're like, just look, look, this, look at this set. This is why you never see the parapet in daytime. Right. <laughs> but and they know perfect it. lighting and, and really good perfect lighting mm -hmm. along with lighting up the torches mm -hmm. is what makes it look okay. Yeah. But when you see it, it looks like a paper mache piece of crap yeah yeah and they and they, they really would, you know, uh, mk was selling it as like the magic of tv like look look what we're able to you know like, yeah. look what the reality is versus what you uh what you see on your screen aren't we talented you know like it was it was good i mean it wasn't arrogant like that but no but, but that, that yeah. was the point it was like look look at the magic look at what we do you know yes yes and that was the most obvious set of the ones we saw mm -hmm. up where you would go wow yeah, yeah. Of uh, the hospital, though, if you were to shield your eyes mm -hmm. from being off stage or seeing the lights, mm -hmm. you're in a hospital. It, yes. Yeah. It does feel like the you know the nurses' station of a hospital. It yeah. does. Yeah. I mean, I've never. Well, I guess I don't know. I guess inside, like the ICU, it's somewhat sort of kind of set up like how they have GHs. Sort of, yeah. But in the most, middle of the ICU. Yeah. Most of my middle. nurses' stations, though, have always been little check encounters in uh -huh. the different departments at Kaiser. Right. You know, not this whole like centralized nurses' hub. And, uh, you know, I, have was people... in, I was right next to a centralized nurses' hub last week with your grandma. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Just like GH? Yeah. Oh, that's Where cool. You know, yeah. That's cool. So, with you know, rooms was... surrounding it. Set up, set up re uh, real life permanent set hospital. Yes. yes. Did you guys take pictures of yourselves on the set? Yes, Blink. Check out our Twitter. Um, those uh, pictures are probably pretty buried now, but if you click on the media um, section of our of mm -hmm. our Twitter and then just scroll through whatever it is that we've shared, eventually you're going to get to set photos. and. Yeah, because it's like almost been a year since we went last time. We, you know, we went a year ago, June. Yeah. So, you know, there's been a lot of content, a lot of stuff put on there since then. So, yeah, it is a little bit bare. Yeah, but, you know, when you scroll very quickly, though, in, in modern oh, yeah. days. So, uh, finding it is, is pretty easy. Uh, but, yeah, check it out. Check it out, check it out, check mm -hmm. it out, check it out. Uh, was Catherine Bell the first one to go over the parapet? I don't know if she was the first one to go over the parapet, but she was the only one to die from the parapet. It is. She's the only one to die from it. Mm. Only one to die. <laughs> I don't want that. Uh, I don't want the behind the scenes of how intimidating the parapet is. Oh, sorry, Leanne, I ruined the illusion for you. It's not very scary when they go over it. They they fall um, nowhere, and nowhere <laughs> land on a crash pad, and they still use a stunt person. Yeah, <laughs> because everybody don't want to break their old bones over there. Well, even <laughs> it, well. Uh, Yes, and also I think that there's different like insurance policies on an actor versus a stunt person. 
And so Probably. they kind of like push it that way. Plus, you know, everything is unionized and there's contracts and things are made. So you kind of have to require using a certain performer for a certain thing. Yeah. So it might be, you know, legal, you know, in legal terms when it comes to the agreements between all these unions, but you have to use the stunt person. I think the last person we saw go over the parapet was Esme, <laughs> and, she, and she propelled herself off. She backed off. She just, boom. Yeah, she just said, screw you, man. Oh, she literally. Yeah, she did. She put her hands up and went, fate. Backwards. Yes. <laughs> fate, the baby. Fate. The baby survived this fall one time. It'll survive again. It's going to survive again. Right. Uh, BLQ and Lois mentioned Ned, mentioned Ned being a polygamist? What? I guess I missed that. What do you mean, a polygamist? What, has he had more than one wife at a time before? Oh, I think he... I think I think I know you're... Yeah. Yeah! I think it was when he was married to Kathleen, maybe. I don't... I don't was know. He, was he it's married to somebody as Eddie and married to somebody as Ned? Maybe. Huh. From a long time ago. I'm thinking a secret She's married bell to Alexis for baby. A minute. She says she continues a secret bell baby, and that kid could be related to Cody. I don't. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't, I don't know. An interesting thought pattern. That would be a brand new storyline introduced, which I don't think we've really, besides Jason's return, a new storyline I don't think has really been introduced yet. No, I don't think so. Either. But I like that idea, though, because that gives Cody something else. Mm -hmm. And Cody's character is pretty singular right now. Yeah, I mean, uh, well, with John J. York a little bit unavailable at, at the moment, his whole Scorpio thing is a little bit on pause. And finding a way to bring in another relative of his and so they can kind of explore some family ties with him might be a way to get around that for a while. Yeah. Or have his uh, or have his seal and whale loving sister come back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love it. I love it. I love it. Catherine and Cody Bell. Um, I guess Ned was married to Lois and Catherine Bell at the same time, according to Melissa. One is Eddie, though, and maybe one is Ned. I, 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 don't, I don't know. I don't know. I remember it was so long ago. It doesn't seem. I was watching it back. Oh, I was. Because I remember Ned and Lois get married. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Baby P. Lee says, I haven't watched a show since last week or something. I'm confused. Oh, boy, you miss a widget week of GH now. You miss a lot. Yeah, you now it's, you know, yeah. There We don't have that many filler days on GH right no, now. No, 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 no. They're really trying to get things moving and really establish what's going on with these characters. And I think really... I don't know, place things uh, in, in position for whatever their, their big plans are next. Um, but hey, you know, we try to be informative as we go through our reactions as well. So listen closely and you'll you'll probably get the details of what happened during the week as well. Yeah. Yeah, just don't count on it. <laughs> a little bit, a little bit, you know, I mean. So, so Matt, what did you think about this? Mm -hmm. What did you think about this? We didn't even talk about this on Thursday hardly at all. Okay. What do you think about we talked about it a little bit. Sonny threatened to kill Jason like three times in that conversation. Well, yeah, we didn't talk about it on Thursday because it didn't happen yet. Well, that's right, because they had just started that conversation. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. He threatened to kill him like three times, you guys. You guys catch all that? He threatened to kill him like three times. And then Jason threatened to kind of kill him right back. Kind of. You know, but also, but in a way of like, listen, Sonny, if I wanted you dead... Yeah. You'd be dead. And Sonny knows that because Jason never misses. His Jason big old chrome gun. He's my best hit man. He never misses. Never. Never misses. Never. And if he misses, he misses on purpose. He misses on purpose. He nudges the, uh, the sniper out of the way. Mm hmm. Which is, uh, which is what happened this time. Uh, Jason's totally right. If, if, if Jason wanted Sonny to be dead, he would be dead. But I think I think uh, I I understand why Jason asked him if he was off his meds because he was just even if he was mad to go you know the phrase is zero to sixty right Sonny right. going zero to one hundred and twenty right and yeah Jason recognizes that are you did you did you take your meds and uh, you know the end of that conversation didn't really work out for everybody <laughs> no uh, no reconciliation. Oh. Uh, and yeah, I'm a bit mids. But of course, we've seen from Olivia's, not Olivia, from Ava's reaction. 
those meds ain't working. No, those meds ain't working. And I wonder, I wonder, if we're going to have to find out in the next couple of weeks, what's Ava going to do? Ava's going to figure this out. Ava's going to figure it out. She will. And Ava's she, going to figure it out. She, you know, she, it's not like she doesn't have a connection to Valentine, so it's entirely possible that she might start to put one, two, and three together. Start suspecting him be in some very way. interesting to see what Ava does with all this. Now, Ava just to be just... clear, though, Ava did not take Sonny's bipolar medication. She took some sort of different muscle relaxer, drowsy-making thing. Mm -hmm. They were very clear on the show. We talked about this on Thursday as well, so, you know, go check out that late night tonight. Uh, but they were extreme. They have been extremely clear on the show that Sonny takes lithium, 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 lithium for his yes. bipolar. Well, I wasn't sure, though, Matt, because I don't know if lithium is the name of the drug or the <laughs> brand of the drug. And lithium it's actually called, you is know. literally the name of a chemical. Okay. Kind of like hydrocodone is vi Vicodin. You know what I mean? Right. I and, but sure. lithium is lithium, you know, because it's, it's, it's okay. you know, like a lithium battery. You know, it's, it's, it's an element. Okay. You know, I can't be I more specific than that. It might have some sort of like super science-y Latin name. Maybe, but it's so not sure. it's not whatever it is that that he took. Uh, people have done the due diligence, not me, not the tenth floor, but other people have. And uh, the name is not exact to, but very similar to a popularly subscribed muscle relaxer. Ooh. So it okay. seems like they might have taken a fictitious route when it came to naming this medicine. Like a soma but, or something like that. Yeah, but instead of calling it a Tylenol, it'd be like Tylenor. Mm -hmm, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think that they, it seems like they went that route and picked something that sounds similar to, but isn't exactly something that's real, but it's but a are, muscle relaxer. Uh, so lithium is we... an element on the periodic table, says Melissa. So thank you very much for the science confirmation. But, but our, but as an audience, are we supposed to be thinking that's what he's taking? She took his lithium medicine? No. No, no, no. no we're the not the, to be the that reason why they showed the, the name of the medicine that she was taking was to show us that she wasn't taking his mm -hmm. his his uh, bipolar meds because that's the main thing that they talk about. The thing that, you know, are you taking your medicine for, the, for bipolar, bipolar? So if mm -hmm. she were to grab a pill bottle from Sunny's cabinet without showing you what it is or telling you what it is, the mm -hmm. assumption is it would be his bipolar medicine. Right. So since they spent some time on the label to show you that it's not... Mm -hmm. then you know that that's their way of, of well then i don't understand then why is it why is she saying i'll feel nothing because the um pharmacist has cut his uh, prescription power in by a quarter on all of his for prescriptions everything he for takes? all of his prescriptions oh for everything a is going to figure this all this out and yeah. i'll just wonder what is she going to do with that information is she going to like put it in her back pocket and use it to her benefit it's, or is she going to do the right thing? I mean, she might, because here's the thing. She's handing Sonny li uh, liquor. Yeah, she is. You know, she knows that he doesn't drink. They spent time she... on Christina's face reaction to it, sh informing the audience that we mm -hmm. should fall in line with Christina's feelings, which is, what the hell is she doing? Concern. Big concern. concern. What are you doing? You know? Right. Um, like, that, they spent a lot of time on her reaction. Follow the show. Yeah. Follow the post signs that the show puts up for you when it comes to what you should be thinking and feeling. And in mm -hmm. that moment, it was supposed to be from Christina's point of view of that weirdness of disappointment, but also at the same time, I don't quite understand what this is. Right. And then as right. we learned from her subsequent conversation with Blaze, watch multiple days, folks. Don't just react to one. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> as she, we found out with her subsequent conversation with Blaze, she really couldn't be like, Hey, well, what the f are you doing? Right. In that moment, because she thinks that, and it's probably right, Ava's up to something. And, Don't trust Ava, as they shouldn't. And in order to get in front of that, you're going to have to figure out what that thing is. You can't just be like, She's doing something, Sonny. He's not going right. to believe you. He's drunk. Right. Right now, he sees that he sees Ava as the only ally, the one that really understands. Him. Right, right. So you, so you got to figure out what, what's going on before you can say something. And that's some fan reaction that I saw was, how could Christina sit there and not say anything? Because she, she's smarter than you give her credit for. Mm -hmm. And she's actually, Christina has had to learn, don't to be so um, ballistic. Mm -hmm. Don't be so reactive. Yeah, 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 yeah. She might turn out Think to be the mob princess we bit. want all along. Right. 
a grown up Christina. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, see, so, now the writers have changed too. We're, we're supposedly two months away still from her, from her uh, youth home opening that mm -hmm. we haven't heard her mention in ages. No, she hasn't said anything about the youth home in a while. And it's supposed to open, I believe, in June. Mm hmm. Right. I don't know if we're going to be getting it anymore. No, I don't know either. And I know that, uh, and and the baby's supposed, I think the baby's supposed to come in June or July. Something like that. It was, It seemed like it was lining up that the baby was going to come in around the same time she was opening up the, uh, the youth home. But also at mm -hmm. the same time, we're here midway through April and she's just now showing. Now, it's possible she's just going to be a skinny thing pregnant. Because that's real. That happens. That's very real. It's separate, especially for first babies. It's very real. Where you don't get a little bump until right to the end. Mm -hmm. Not everybody's like that. I didn't get no little bump at the end. <laughs> I got a huge bump from the beginning. Um, <clears throat> yeah. But a lot of, a lot of, you know, a, a lot of, um, especially first time mothers, they don't hardly even have to wear maternal clothes or, you know. Mm -hmm. That's that's oh. and they're like, oh man, pregnancy is easy. And then they have their second one. And they're like, oh god, exactly. <sighs> get out, get out, get out. Why has it been forty eight <laughs> hours? <laughs> uh, Chandra, and I'm going to read this because I respect you. Uh, my brother ha tar takes heart meds. Uh, they cause drowsiness too. Imagine if Ava had popped one and didn't know what they and didn't know. Imagine if Ava had popped one of those and didn't need it. I know why they did the scene, but it wasn't a good choice. And that's just my opinion. Feel free to always share your opinion, Chandra. It's welcome here on the 10th floor. Um, you're, 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 you're right. Um, it was not a good choice from a character point of view. Um, from like a cultural standpoint, you know, yeah, don't take other people's medicine. I think it's 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 understood that her decision was wrong. She even had to convince herself to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, and she didn't really understand what she was taking. Not really. No, and that that's a big problem as well. You know. Yeah. Um, and it's entirely it's entirely possible that she could have had a terrible reaction. See, I thought had it I, been fully prescribed. I said this on Thursday a little bit, but this is, I was really surprised because she poured that scotch and left it there. Yeah. I thought she was preparing Sonny a drink, expecting him soon and have it already poured mm -hmm. and kind of like, you know, getting a, kind of, kind of like a throwback of getting your slippers in your newspaper. Yeah. And here's your highball uh -huh. kind of thing. <laughs> That's what I thought she was preparing for. And I thought she was going to go in there and find something to dust in it. Mm -hmm. make him you know make him a little woozy yeah maybe to have his guard down perhaps he would lean in for another kiss and a little more than that mm -hmm. i thought she was trying to set him up for a rendezvous yeah i did <laughs> i did that's what i thought she was doing and then when she went in there and actually was getting him there for herself i was like oh mm -hmm. that's not that was not the way i was writing it in my head no no, no, no. She tried to self medicate. She's trying to, to, to get herself to sleep. Um, you know, I'm everybody asleep. else in Port Charles is still up having drama while she's trying to go to sleep. And I'm like, why are you going to bed so early, Ava? Uh, <laughs> um, but that was just a fun little notice. Um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it, I'm not sure exactly what this informs of Ava um, yet. Uh, but the show has been doing a really good job of making sure that, that nothing is really a wasted sequence or time. Like something moves either plot or character forward. I tell you, but she never she never leaves the room now. It doesn't matter who comes over. It doesn't matter who comes over. And he never excuses her. He never tells her to get out of here. Well, no, he doesn't she, keep business because she knows business. Completely separate with Ava. No, he knows Does she it? knows the business. That's why. She's been knows exposed the to the business. It's not gonna ruin her like it would ruin somebody from the outside. Mm-hmm. And maybe he doesn't care if it's gonna put her in danger. Mm -hmm. Or maybe he thinks that she got some big old big girl pants. She can take care of herself. Yeah. Maybe she, I don't I don't know. It's the truth. It's the truth. It's the truth. Um so yeah, I just I don't know. I don't know what the future holds for Ava. It's it's you know, uh -huh. it's gonna be tied into his medicine in some way. Uh, but I don't know if it's gonna be her trying to take advantage because like I said, giving him drinks, she is trying to be advantageous in some way. There's no reason to to get I him know, back she, on booze if it wasn't for and, her. And I think she's getting the hots for him again. She got the hots for him again. 
but she got you know, I think she might see just a comfortable future, like we were talking about a little bit on Thursday. You know, she likes Sunny to be in the business. She yes. don't mind. So you do all the hard work. She riding his sidecar, no problem. You do all the hard work. Uh, it was going to take the pills again and get a real one and overdo it because she because uh, she says they're weak. I don't know. Are we going to have OD uh, OD Ava? Wow, wouldn't know. that be something? I don't know. I mean, I was kind of on the fence as to what we were going to see when she took those pills to begin with. You know, because she was like, well, who am I getting? And she took two. Yeah. And then like, they pan over her on the bed and I'm like, oh my God, is she going to be like, and then they put, put, put like alka seltzer in her mouth? Hmm. You know, but they didn't go that way. No, I, yeah, I, uh, there we go. And here, here's another suggestion as well. Uh, Michelle says, with her history, Ava's going to be ended up blamed for the meds. Here's oh, the real I think thing. so too. Absolutely, she's gonna be blamed. What happened? I don't know. Two of it. Did you did you lose me? I can't see you anymore. No, I don't know. Two uh, oh, two of those pills are gonna be missing, and Ava's fingerprints are on the bottle. Definitely. Definitely, yeah. yes. I think something's crazy going to happen. If you look down um, at the at the little icons of the programs that are open, do you there see you Zoom? Are. Okay, good. There you are. Good. Hey. Uh, so, yeah, her fingerprints are on the bottle. So, I think Michelle uh, is is kind of hitting the, the nail on the head there. Um, she's going to be blamed for it and also trying to figure out who really did it, which will lead her to Valentine. Yes. And she will then have to be put in a, between a rock and a hard place. Do I, do I do something with this information? Or do I not do something with this information? Mm -hmm. Or who do I do something with this information for? Do I take it to Anna? Mm -hmm. Do I take it to Sunny? Boy, Anna, Anna had, you know, she wouldn't have breakfast with Valentine, right? She's mm -hmm. trying to pick his brain. Trying to get some information about Peckman. And I bet you sure. Anna is going to figure it out. She's going to figure out that Valentina is pregnant. I, there's, there's, there's something that seems to be lingering in Anna's mind right now when it comes to Valentine and his relationship with Jack. Because she was very, very confident in her memories that Valentine was kind of blown off. Oh, no, no, no. That was somebody else. Mm -hmm. That was not somebody else. Here's the thing, though, Valentine. Don't forget. You were a hunchback back then. Mm -hmm. Um... Listen, no harm, no foul. Well, he kind of alluded to that. He wasn't one of the cool kids back then. Right. No, I was off in the corner watching everybody else. Here's mm -hmm. the thing, though. Um, no harm, no foul for anybody that has a, uh, you know, a physical ailment. But if you have one, such as a hunchback, that means that you're going to stand out to a degree. Which means that somebody who says, hey, I remember you hanging out with Jack all the time is probably going to remember you hanging out with Jack all the time because they remember this specific element. See, it's difference. even true it's even true in my own life, Matt. Mm -hmm. It's even true in my own life. When I was in the 7th and 8th grade, I went to the same school as your father. Mm -hmm. Your father had a leg brace at the time. I did yeah. not know your dad at all. Never mm -hmm. met him until later. But I remember him mm -hmm. because I remember his leg brace. Leg brace kid. Oh, yeah, Leg Brace Kid. He's friends with Stan. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I remember even thinking, why doesn't someone oil that damn No, <laughs> Was it really creaky? Because it creaked. Oh. And I thought, why doesn't someone oil that for him? But, you know, I've been taking care of people since I was five, so. <laughs> Good goodness. <laughs> and then you developed a little funny crush though. on him. Isn't that funny, though, man? I do remember him. You developed a little crush on him from afar. I remember. And then when I did meet him in the 10th grade... I, I remember you, you used to have a brace. Yeah. He was like, yeah, don't remind me. Yeah. I ran out of it like Forrest Gump. <laughs> I kind of did. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Forrest, Forrest Gump. Uh, Quasimodo Cassidine. Oh, Melissa. <laughs> oh, funny. oh, it's truth, though. <laughs> it's funny, though. <laughs> uh... <laughs> uh, Kaiwan agrees. Yeah, if somebody had a hunchback in real life, um, They'd be remember. Sure. Uh, I'm in a wheelchair. They say I can understand you being a little nervous. My 20s wasn't necessarily uh, the most greatest. So I'm and maybe it sounds like Kaiwan might be, you know, experiencing a little uh, personal connection to Valentine's history uh, when it comes to standing out in a crowd a little bit. So, you sure. know, it's all very real. All very real. <laughs> uh, leg brace kid. He's friends with Stan. Let's get married, says Kaiwan. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, where's Daddy T? Asks Chandra. He needs to come wave at us, she says. Everybody's hot for your husband. You need to keep him away from the camera. He's around here. <laughs> He's downstairs He's watching NASCAR. <laughs> uh, Valentine is the most dangerous Cassidine, says Blink. Whatever happened to that? Stay tuned. That's what I have to say. I think that we we are we yeah they painted Valentine as a good guy for a minute. He's not good anymore. I think we talked about it a little bit last week or a little bit on Thursday. So go back to those videos and rewatch if you haven't. Um, uh, where we talked about uh, Valentine had found himself in a little pocket of 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 kind of having his teeth taken away due to circumstances. Um, mm -hmm. he was very hurt by betraying Nina. Essentially, like he really hurt himself. When Nina mm -hmm. found out that he uh, lied about Sasha and their, their relationship ended. On top of that, he started to see how some of his influence and Cassidyne ways had started to influence Charlotte while he was feeling a little bit vulnerable about his own villainous ways. Yes. Which then sunk him a little bit further into, I need to be a better example for my yes. little girl. Yes. So he she doesn't have such like a hard I life. Am, I am not... I'm not showing her how to be a good cast and I am showing her how to be a little Helena. Right. Um, then he falls for Anna. Mm -hmm. You can't be a bad guy and date Anna simultaneously. No. So he was really leaning on whatever goodness that does exist within Valentine, which most villains have some goodness to them. I think Helena is oh, like the most only of one them are they're just a tiny bit com conflicted no, where where bit. you where you don't completely hate them. <laughs> so, right, because you can't completely hate them, otherwise you want them off the show, right? Right, or you want them to die. Or something. So, um, so you can't be a bad guy and date Anna. Um, no. All of this leads to Charlotte getting shot and almost killed by Anna. Mm -hmm. Charlotte kind of not doing good things right choices and valentine in reaction to this doesn't continue down his path of righteousness regarding it he keeps it a secret mm -hmm. he gets her secret therapy he's dealing with it privately he doesn't want her to see kevin in any major way he's kind of interfering with how the other adults are interacting with her he squirrels her away for a little while leaves town Comes back going, you know what? This wasn't worth the effort. I don't have anything that I set up to have. I don't have Nina. I don't have Anna. And my little girl got shot anyway. Mm -hmm. Let me step up, step it up again and keep my family safe. That's what I feel happened to Valentine. I know it's a long analysis, but I think that's what we did. And he's yeah. back to being the most dangerous Cassidy. And he's just slowly depressing that gas pedal. Yeah. And you know, I, I'm, we have to. We don't know if the Valent. I mean, it's boring, but you know, Valentine buying Spoon Island, Nicholas buying Spoon Island. Who bought Spoon Island? I don't know, Cyrus. <laughs> Cyrus ain't got no money. No, we haven't seen him in a little while either. And it can't be Jason because he wasn't around. Jason's he wasn't around, and his money is all going to be tied up. In it the was all tied up, except for a couple of his bank accounts. How many bank accounts does he have? I guess I guess people with lots of money have lots of bank accounts. They do. Why? Does it all not fit? Because in one? because banks cannot um, they cannot insure an infinite amount of money. Oh, um, got it. Got it. So that's why people bounce around a little bit. Mm, long line has access to some. Of his money. Jason, if you want to send that over to here, I'll send you my Venmo <laughs> name. And you can, uh, you know, honestly. Jason, like, buy me a coffee, please. Like, like listen, <laughs> just send him, buy me a coffee. Huge tip on buy me a coffee. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Millionaires, billionaires out there, real life. I'm not even talking to Jason Morgan because he's not real. I'm talking to you, Oprah. Okay. <laughs> $10,000, chump change to you. $10,000, life changing for me. Just send it. Oh my goodness. Just send it, Oprah. Just send it, Oprah. <laughs> <laughs> Life changing. So. Or, you know, blink if you want to send me 10K. <laughs> I'll let you. Um, Curtis is walking, and every single time we see him, he is stronger and better. 
Yes. He will be jogging before you know it. He will be. What does Aurora Media need with gyms? What do they need with gyms? Yes. I don't. What does a media company need to open a nationwide chain of gyms to compete with 24-hour fitness and plant fitness? Because they're going to branch off and they're going to have oh, a, you, a streaming website as well. Liz, thank you so much. Okay, so they're going to open up these gyms and they're also yeah. going to offer like Peloton classes. Yes. <laughs> I guess that's where the media comes into play. Yes. Uh, Liz, thank you very much for your contribution to Super Chat. Thanks, Liz. Thanks, Liz. Thanks, Liz. Uh, Jason, Matt needs a new mic. Yes. Jason, I need a new <laughs> microphone. No, I'm going to get it once once YouTube uh, decides it's ready to pay me out for uh, your generous donations and contributions since your Super Chat's open. I will be getting the microphone. I promise you that. Yes. Maybe in time for my birthday. A little birthday gift for myself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 I already picked it. I already know which one it's going to be and everything. Yeah. He already sent me a picture of it. Yeah. And then when I put it in and then I go like this and then when I tap it, it's not going to die. Mm-hmm. Um, it's going to fit in this little clip a lot better. Uh-huh. I'm going to look so much more professional because there's not going to be these weird, like, wires dangling out. Yeah. This one will probably still exist, though, because I like to be able to hear my voice when I do this. Hmm. It's, I don't know, I guess it's old holdover from from um, uh, from doing commentary for wrestling. Because mm -hmm. being able to hear myself is how I did that. Like, this this was the exact setup where I can hear my voice live as I speak it in my monitor. Just like a singer. Yeah. Um, and uh, with that, it, it really taught me to be able to listen to myself as I speak. And be able to achieve the tone and the peaks and the valleys and all of that. Because I'm literally hearing live what's being broadcast to you. I can't even hear my, my regular, you know, the regular skull vibration that you get when you speak. I can't hear yeah. that. I am exclusive to oh. what I am broadcasting, everybody. I used to wear the headset, you guys. I didn't like that. <laughs> so now I know exactly how poor my Sonny Corinthos is. <laughs> I know exactly how bad it is, right? I know exactly how terrible this is. Oh, oh, um, oil. because they want to get them. They want to make Curtis rich. Well, that's good. Rich Curtis should not be mad. A rich guy has to be on the show. Okay, hey, you know, let's make rich. Well, Curtis. and 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 what and what uh, Drew was saying though, he's he's perfect for 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 what they're going to try to do because he's experiencing it. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, yeah, I get it. I don't know. Um, everybody, you know, wants to have multiple jobs, and I guess that's also what rich people do. They have their fingers in a lot of different pies. Mm -hmm. clubs and fitness stuff and all that stuff now here's the thing though curtis you gave up way way too much in that interview and chandra will tell you that <laughs> if they sit you down they say hey we got an idea for a brand new position that doesn't exist yet and we think that you would be a prime candidate this is what our very basic goal is and they say what would you do and you give them every detail of your three-year plan there's no reason for them to hire you at this point, Curtis. No. <laughs> and Chandra will tell you that. <laughs> at least I'm assuming that she would. <laughs> Was that a good interview, Chandra? Let me know if Curtis blew it. <laughs> I know that Nina interrupted because she wanted to come gossip with Drew. She didn't know he was there, but she wanted to go in and go, you know what? Guess what? You know, you know how we just did this thing? I just saw Carly with, with Jagger. Like, she was just going there to be. Oh, my gosh. She was. When she saw that door open. Oh, my gosh. That made Nino so happy, didn't it? It did. But it's too bad that Carly was fully clothed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, so she goes, So you know, she, she goes and she's, she, you know, she wants to go gossip with Drew. But then mm -hmm. finds Curtis and, and Michael there and is walking in going, oh, my God, Drew, can you believe I just saw Carly? And at this point, well, now I just got to say it. I know I got something to say about Carly. I can't hide it now. Oh, well, no. And she she has to because her son's standing there. Yes. And then and then not only does she say it, but then she leans into it mm -hmm. to a point, folks, you really need to pay attention. Like not, not you in the chat, but everybody who's not listening to the benefit mm -hmm. of this podcast because they don't listen to us. Um, you people who don't listen, need to pay more attention to the show because Nina, the little line of Nina who was like, 
after two minutes after breaking up with Drew, right? Right. When one minute after breaking up with Carly. Right. You no, know, in comparison. Yeah. Uh, you were there. It was like she was like talking about her at the and kind of and kind of needling Drew with it at the same yeah. time. This Needling is the same time. this is Michelle Stafford Mina, you guys, and I love it. It is. I love it. It is. It is. It is. It is. It is. It is. Uh, it is uh, a, a tack willow in the middle of her own classroom. Mm -hmm. bonk, bonk! What's her name on the table, Nina? <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, so I guess you know uh, what we can say is maybe the era of different actor, different character, different actor, new take on character might be going mm -hmm. away as the new head writers might be kind of returning these characters to some of their original beats. Valentine, yeah, like Nina, it. even Maxie to a degree. Yeah. You know, like she's, she's, she's being a little more of a spitfire with, with Nina, with um Lucy. Yeah. Oh, and speaking of Lucy, man, you know what? I was kind of surprised actually. Historically, just watching Lucy. Yeah. She's, she's, kind of weird she's always been kind of weird but at the same time though she's can be quite a professional and does know how to present herself when she tries mm -hmm. i did not think she was going to go on home and heart and stink it up like she did no no but she made it all about lucy and it's supposed to be about your face cream exactly. not about you she's made it all about lucy and she and morgan fairchild have not gotten along on these home and heart things there's no. no reason for the host and I guess, you know, What's her name? De Havilland? De Havilland, something like that. Or Heaven or De Havilin. Even a, whatever. Yeah, whatever. Whatever her name is. Uh <laughs> clearly she's got some influence on the show and my executive producer agrees with me mm -hmm. that you're not a suitable replacement for Sasha. Mm -hmm. It's because it's she where's the chem there's gonna be no chemistry. Right. Plus, also at the same time, they haven't gotten along. So why am I going to give you this opportunity? This is actually a great opportunity for me to not feature your brand now because I hate you. Mm -hmm. But Lucy, of course, doesn't see that. And Maxie's like, you stupid. No, and Maxie's watching a whole thing burn down going, oh, my God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I invested. I left Crimson for this. I had a bunch of mm -hmm. money. And then, well, Lucy, your wand ruined that money for me. Mm-hmm. Oh, Maxie just now needs to take reins. Your face cream is about the face plant. She, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> she just said uh, Brooklyn just needs to finish finish this uh, this takeover from her granny. Yeah. And at this point, her granny might just give her the freaking company as a wedding gift. Oh, I tell you, <laughs> Brooklyn and Granny are delightful together delightful i i love i love that they are they're they're making I, you know and she actually called her granny at the end of that scene too and tracy didn't flip out mm -hmm. it's because she's softening she is but it's well we but we can never have a completely soft no what, no what, what if she you becomes what, the new lila she absolutely reminded me of lila in that scene what if she's starting to take after her mom now that she's old she, and silver oh and lost gosh. all of her family <laughs> Every every husband. Was, if I see this woman with a jar of pickles, she has turned into her mother. Somebody, well, I mentioned pickles, and then somebody's like, "It was relish." So I don't know. Was it relish? <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't it was know relish. either. I didn't I see it. I think they diversified. It was relish and pickles. Relish. Well, there you go. Uh -oh. There's a whole pickle brand. It was. <laughs> I was pickles. Blink says cheap ass set for the home and heart. Have you seen QVC? Blink. Have you seen the Home <laughs> Shopping Network? Blink. You're lucky you know that stuff I, isn't made out of cardboard. You know, you know what? I know that you could find this anywhere, but I actually saw it live. I used to watch QVC some. Oh yeah. Years ago. It's background music, background music, background TV, Good just noise. on, right? Um, I remember. Oh, this is like years. This is over twenty years ago. They were they were had a guy up on a big ass ladder. He like fell off of it. Up. He fell off that sucker. Yeah, yeah, he did. He did. He did. I saw. I was watching it that day. Oh my god! And this was before Q oh, with DBR, way. where you could rewind it. You know, you just thought the yeah. whole time. And he was, and, and you saw, you saw the bottom of his legs, and you saw him fall through flame, frame. And of course, it was the frame wasn't all the way to the floor, so you didn't hit or see him bonk himself. Right. But it was like that fool just fell. And then they switched off real quick too. 
Yeah. And then they came back. It was weird. He's fine, everybody. He's okay. We've taken him to the hospital, though. Uh, mm-hmm. That was her pickled Lila relish. Pickled Lila was a relish. Pickled Lila oh, was I... huge and saved the Quartermain fortune. Relish. It was Lila and Stella's business. I don't know where Stella comes from. Must be a different Stella. I don't remember. I don't remember, but I remember that they were, um, they had lost their money and they were hanging out at Bobby's quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And they even had like a chicken, they had a chicken cluck kind of hut for a minute. Yes. <laughs> kind of just living in somebody's weird backyard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. They're talking about uh, Maxie's uh, hair. So, you know, we, we mentioned that over in, on Days for Dummies podcast. Her hair is a little lighter. Her hair is, is almost as light as it was. And she's got that dark root thing going on already. I didn't she even really notice, is. honestly. <laughs> You know, well, they didn't leave. They they didn't leave her hair dark, dark for very long. No, they started lightening it up almost right away. Uh, but I think, I think Kristen looks great. I think she looks good. Yeah. Uh, I I like her better as blonde. Oh, I choose left a uh, But her everything about her, she just looks better. Yeah, 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 yeah. Looks yeah. healthier. You know, she might, might maybe turned a corner in whatever treatment she had been under. Yeah. You know, her, so that's she good. looks healthier. Her makeup application looks better. Her hair looks better. Her mm-hmm. wardrobe looks better. And um, you know what I said about a jawline? You know, that's where you kind of see where people are. Maybe if they've lost a couple of pounds, you kind of see yeah. it here first. And I'm seeing that with her. Yeah. She's looking jawline good. is becoming looking a little good. more defined. Gonna have... Okay. So, Stella was a maid at the quarter main. So Stella and Alice were a couple of maids. So I guess Stella, I and, yeah, Stella, Stella the maid, and Lila worked closely together to okay. save the Quartermain fortune. And I'm sure Edward was very annoyed that the maid. Well, he was very annoyed that the Quartermains had to have any kind of assistance. Yeah, sure. <laughs> oh. Oh, apparently Stella was a very popular maid character. I just don't, I just don't remember her. Yeah. Too many soap operas for too many years. Too yeah, many hours of television. A lot of characters. And back in the day, too, I didn't necessarily sit down and watch my stories that much. Come on, they were on all day long. They really were. Like, you would just, like, put on ABC on and be like, oh, like what life to live is on right now. Let me watch. They were on from 11 a.m. to 3.34 o'clock. That's a lot of content to consume. It's a lot easier to watch all the soaps now. Plus, you can watch them whenever you want now. Mm-hmm. Couldn't do that before. And there was a lot of... There was a lot of that background noise of soap opera too, you know. Mm-hmm. So tune in I was one, hearing it. I was, and I think a lot of people did that actually back in the day, and I think it was probably even scripted that way to a certain degree. Where you could watch soap operas as a radio show if you wanted to. I mean, I still listen to soap sometimes. Mm-hmm. Once I'm able to recognize the character voices, I'm able to follow along. They don't do a they don't do a whole lot of prolonged music without speech. And if they do, like, so when I'm listening to it and I'm not watching because I'm doing the dishes or focused on something else or even on a walk, you know, I'm not walking <laughs> down the street like this, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, what I'll do is, you know, they'll have a conversation. And if there's a few seconds of music after they have stopped, then I'm assuming that that's the tag, mm-hmm. you know, and then we're moving yep. on. But if it feels awkwardly placed or awkwardly lengthy, mm-hmm. then I will back it up and pull the phone out to see what was going on on the screen mm-hmm. because it seems as though this was a yeah. sequence that just didn't have dialogue. But in my experience of listening to it, they do that very few and far between. So mm-hmm. it's entirely possible that you could still potentially consume it as a radio show. I, when I was, I, I know, you know, it was years ago, not recent years, but years ago, I remember co-workers listening to it at work in their cubicle. Yeah. Or they, you know, couldn't view it, but they were listening to it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Gotta keep up with my stories. Gotta know what Eric is up to. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, thank you, baby. Baby Peely says, happy five years on the podcast, by the way. Thank you so much. I love the oh, little thank five thank you. Up. Just like I'm just leave a five up probably for the foreseeable future. Might as well continue to celebrate that through our fifth season. You know, yeah. there's no reason to turn it off. No. Let's keep it. Let's keep it. Plus, it looks good. Matches the colors really well. <laughs> uh, the music was weird this past week. Anybody notices? Blink. Mm, not so sure. 
that's for sure. I didn't notice, no. Mm -hmm. Melissa says, I think Jagger is going to start feeling bad about the deal with Jason because Carly before was just a mark. Now he's seen the Valkyrie in her form and he's in love. Oh, I think he's in love. He, I think he's very, I think he's very interested. I don't know about love, but he's very interested. He finds Carly very interested, interesting. And now he sees that she has compassion for other people. She's a real person. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You might have hit the nail on the head there a little bit, Melissa, uh, when it mm -hmm. comes to the developing complications between Jagger, Carly, and Jason. Does this lead to Carly and Jagger becoming an item? Probably not. But that doesn't mean it's not going to get confusing and tense. Especially mm -hmm. if Jason builds a wall. Mm -hmm. If Jason starts to put up the bricks of, hey, you know, we should probably maintain our distance while I figure out what's going on with this coffee company I'm taking over. My gosh, Jason has so many words, doesn't he? Hey, Liz. Uh, Way more words than he ever has. Yes. Yeah, he's got so much to say. And I'm, I'm all right with it. He's legitimizing. Uh, I wonder how Steve Burton's doing with all that dialogue. You know, he's not used to having to remember all that seems shit. Seems as though he's doing just fine. You know, you and can kind of tell when somebody's. Too. You can you can tell a little bit when somebody's searching. And I actually find Maurice actually searching less now too. Yeah, maybe he's There's feeling a, more engaged as well. I really think that he's just far more engaged with the content. I don't know; these people don't come here for the news. Um, if it's just, I'm just going to start rattling it out. Uh, <laughs> I don't know these people don't come to the news. Um, but um, I, I feel as though he might be a little bit more engaged with the content. It might be a little more interesting to him. Um, and, uh, and and I think it shows because I really do see a lot less of the, you know, than we had gotten recently. So kudos yes. all across. I really think that there's just been an elevation across the board. I think there's been an elevation approach across the board, too. And I think the cast is pretty happy with the writer thing. I think so, too. And you know what I've also noticed, Mom? And now this is kind of isolated is just this month as we continue to grow into the new era of General Hospital. Because back, you know, January, February, it's a little bit different than March and April. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, the skew of episode numbers... Is mm -hmm. finding itself to be a little more evenly balanced. So yeah. in like January, February, you had like the top three was was um, it, um Sunny, then Carly, then Nina, I think, mm -hmm. for like mm -hmm. episode counts. And yep. then, you know, you go down, you see uh, Tabiana Ali and Nicholas Chavez as Sprino. Uh, we're really high on episode counts. Mm -hmm. Um while everybody else, while they were at like, you know, 15, 20, you know, 20 episodes, 16 episodes mm -hmm. in the month, and everybody else was at five. Right. If you take a look at what happened in March and what's going on through April, you're going to see four, 15 episodes for Sunny, 14 episodes for Nina, 14 episodes for Drew, 13 episodes for Carly. Like mm -hmm. the evenness of these appearances is a little more noticeable like you instead of having like a top four we, uh -huh. there's like a top eight do you think that's because there's a little more diversity in stories i think that um with renewed effort uh of direction they're able to tie all of these things in a lot better than they have been when it comes to the flow of the episode and how these narratives maybe touch upon each other or crash into each other or how they spread across multiple people like in the case of, of jason of umbrella. yeah jason's a huge umbrella story because it's touched sam's family and elizabeth's family and carly's family and his family and sunny and do 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 don't forget all of that time we spent on dante in the hospital and danny's reaction and, and and you know jason going and talking to jake um like all of these things have happened over the last couple of weeks it has you know they didn't talk about it or go back to it this week but that stuff mm -hmm. still happened very recently. And you can see it in these episode counts. They're very even. I don't know the ultimate number of appearances that these people have guaranteed. I don't know when somebody tops out or maxes out when it comes to appearances. I don't know what it is. But we've also seen through this week, Mom, mm -hmm. it seems as though contracts might be being renegotiated. You think so? Well... 
early this week, everybody was convinced that Michael Easton is out at GH. I did hear that. Convinced. I heard that. Where it they, took they let over, him go. Like it took over like Sunday, Monday. On like they let media. him go. Like, like, like he's off the set. He's not coming back. Like it was like, yeah. like, like, remember, like Marcus Coloma type of yes. buzz about yeah. it. Here's yeah. the thing. Okay. So I heard from one source and it was just one line. M.E. Mm -hmm. -E is out. Right. Just that. Huh? Just that. That, that. That's how I get my information, everybody, by the way. It's incredibly cryptic. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but just M.E. is out. And I'm like, oh, how interesting. Uh, and then it explodes online. Mm -hmm. A couple of hours later, I hear from somebody who knows this man and says things are a little more fluid. There's no decisions mm -hmm. that have been made. And here we are, nary seven days later. Nobody is saying a thing about it. Must not be true then. Which tells me that it was a huge misunderstanding of what's going on. My yeah. guess, I don't know these people, don't come here for the news. My guess is that they went and they renegoti are renegotiating these deals. Makes sense. Episode counts. Add, take away. We saw Robert Gossett. You know, he's not on contract anymore. Right. You know, um, things like that. Uh, so I feel as though that, 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 that's what had happened. And they might have just pulled Mike Leeson into the room and said, hey, you know, we got to renegotiate your deal. Like, it's one of those required things. We have to figure out a new deal for you or the answer is you don't work here anymore. Mm-hmm. That gets out. Sign a new deal. You're out. He must right. be out. Yeah, yeah. I can see how that could happen. You know, and but that it just doesn't seem to be the case. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. We will see. You know, we nothing will. is guaranteed. Um, but as it seems right now, like it was a huge hot rumor, and then now not a word. And Michael and Michael Easton didn't say a word. Did he? he didn't say a word. He even opened up an Instagram account recently. Like, started an Instagram account. So take that for whatever you think it might mean. Oh, do I need to get on, on Instagram? You know? Or, I'm comfortable. I want to be on Instagram, you know? Yeah. You know? <laughs> uh, we aren't getting Jason and Liz. No. No. Uh, Chandra says that it's amazing how the fans will try to dictate what actor, which actors should be on the show or fired. Uh, actors need an income just as not actors do. It's true, Chandra. <laughs> oh. and they're not as rich as we think uh no especially daytime actors those those guys are lucky to make 100k like really like they're, they're, they're living a comfortable mid-life you know like mid-range life i think jason and liz have moved past romance yeah i don't i don't see a romantic uh pairing for them coming soon i can see maybe uh, more interactions when it comes to co-parenting i think so too i think i think that we might see like um uh, a real friendship. <laughs> but I don't think we're going to see uh, a Jason Liz uh, reunion. And if we did, it would be sometime from now. Yeah. I don't think, I don't think so. I yeah. don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. I agree with that as well. Actually, you know, and I don't think this is going to happen either, but I see a Jason Sam before I see Jason Liz. Hmm. But I don't think that's going to happen either. I don't either. think that's going to happen either. I think we're moving forward when it comes to Jason, not backwards. Um, I, I know I understand that some people might consider Carly backwards, but I would say it's forward for uh, them. Because I think it's, it's forward too because Jason and Carly have never had a real romance. Not a lengthy one, at least. They, no. they caught some feelings 30 years ago, <laughs> suppressed those for a long time. And so it really is untraveled territory for them. It really is. And I don't and, and I think there's going to be obstacles and nonsense in the way, and we're not going to see that, uh, like, uh, that great Carly, uh, Jason scene. Mm -hmm. It's not going to happen fast. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know exactly. Uh, so just to, to, for me to add a little more insight to some of the uh, the the chats responses here, I don't know exactly, exactly, exactly what these salaries are, but you know, Maurice Bernard, Laura Wright, they're they're making millions just reality uh, is it you know, at least a million you know is it is it you know is it's not 15 
There's no dividends. There's no back end. It's all just salary. But they're up there, you know. Yes, I would say so. Somebody like Taj Bella who plays TJ is likely making 50K. He's just not I, No. He's no. contracted. He's guaranteed this money. He knows he's going to be on a certain amount of time over the certain amount of months. Mm -hmm. But it's not, you know, he's, he, I'm sure his life is sustainable. But it's not super lucrative. What he's gifted, though, is time. Mm -hmm. 50K. That'll hold you for a couple of months in Los Angeles. Giving you time. To work on your act, your body, travel around, have an interesting social media presence, that sort of stuff. Yeah, and 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 you know, uh, get some, get some other gig. Get some other gig, some or other focus gig. on honing your craft, or whatever other little business but venture you might some, be in. Some some of some of these some of these actors, uh, you know, they they have a a side hustle. They have an oh, ordinary yeah. job as well. Oh, yeah, 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 for sure. For sure, for sure, for sure. Uh, I'd be interested in seeing Marcus Coloma come back. Marcus Coloma. Oh, hey, you know, I'm, I'm wondering what happened to Marcus Coloma. Folks, I can't tell you exactly what went on. Because I don't really know all the details myself. Mm -hmm. But I can say that man's never coming back. No. Um, no, he, you know, he, he jumped on the Ingo train when he was walking out. To a degree, you know, they're, they're, I mean, they're, they had a lot to say on the way out. And um, when it comes down to it, there is a workplace culture that needs to be respected. Uh, mm -hmm. There are certain people on staffs that are able to kind of shirk that culture due to their prominence, tenure, talent. But if you're mm -hmm. not at that level and try to play mm -hmm. those games. It just mm -hmm. doesn't really work out. But, you know, it Matt, you're absolutely right. Yeah, you know, it, it depends on how important you are to the show. All of it. Mm -hmm. All of it. All of it. All of it. Yeah. In some, in, in some instances, yeah, you'd be placing your foot down. Mm -hmm. In some instances, you'd be shooting yourself in your own damn toe. Right. Uh, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, Melissa says that John Boyega, who uh, had, had a lot to say about Star Wars, he was in the most recent three Star Wars movies. Hey, Dad, are you back there? Hi. Hey, come on here and show your face. Sean wants to see you. She said, where's Daddy T? <laughs> <laughs> here he comes. <laughs> <laughs> He's a giant, folks. Not uh, your belly. <laughs> Come here. He waved. Uh, it didn't get as deep as 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 there what Ingo is. had to say. Hey, Dad. <laughs> it didn't get as as what um uh in deep as as what Ingo uh had to say. But he didn't finish his final weeks. He left a little early, and he wasn't necessarily complimentary toward the show. He didn't get into trying to sue them and say, oh, you know, oh, you know, nothing. But nothing what he deep. did was stamp his feet on the tenth floor. Yeah, you see, you know. And then and kind of marched out of there. Yep. <laughs> Cue careless whisper. Oh. <laughs> it's um, all right. Melissa says that John Boyega, who um, had a lot to say about Star Wars, um, but he's coming back. So, it, you know, it could happen with time. Um, mm -hmm. There is a huge difference between being on Star Wars and being on General Hospital. Uh, when it comes down to it, Star Wars needs John Boyega. General Hospital does not need Marcus Coloma. And you know what? We're not seeing him, Marcus Coloma. We don't see him pop up in the days or over on the CBS show. So we haven't seen that. Nope. And that could be, should be a little bit telling, I think. Uh, I, I Listen, again, I don't know these people. Don't come here for the news. I only know what I hear from third-party sources. And in this case, it wasn't incredibly detailed. But I, I thought I thought that Marcus Coloma did a fine job as a Cassidyne. Mm -hmm. I thought he and he and Valentine really reminded me of each other because of the way they spoke. They're mm -hmm. delivered. They're very breathy and whispery yeah. sometimes. Yeah. Marcus was very much that way with Nicholas. He never had like really projected voice unless he was yelling. 
Right. He was always whispery. Yes. So, uh, and I thought he did fine. I thought he was convincing Cassidy. However, I like Adam Huss better. Adam Huss, I think, gives you a more complete person. I think so, too. You know, um, I, I understand the quiet res reservation. I even complimented Marcus Coloma and how he handled some of the scenes and how, how that subdued reaction added some, you know, interesting layers to the, to the performance. Uh, but it did eventually get to the point where this is just what we got from him at all times. Right. I really loved, I really liked his portrayal of Nicholas when he had Esme up in the room. <laughs> yeah. 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 You know, yeah. when he would go in there and talk to her and stuff and gave her the Christmas tree with the toilet paper garland. Yes. Yes. He, uh, he really excelled at, at saying a-hole remarks. Yeah, he did. He really <laughs> did. He really did. Now, but also if you're really good at playing a type of character, what might that say about you in real life? I don't know these people. I can't say. We could be best friends if I ever met this man. <laughs> well, I know his speaking voice. He wasn't all breathy like Nicholas. He did have no, another... it, was, it was a performance choice. Yes, it, it was, was a performance, performance choice. choice. He, was, he was trying to be he was trying to be something. Now I heard that not <laughs> Michael Easton really does pierce his lips all the time. Like this thing? Yes. Yeah, so um uh, so I know somebody who knows him, I guess. You know, and and I don't know. I'm not like you know, we go out for weekly dinners. Types of knows him, but you knows, know, him. knows him well enough to have had conversations with nobody else around. Huh? Um, and uh, and and yeah, from my from my understanding, that's just how his muscles are. It's just the way he really he just, delivers. He just, you know, he's got he a is... natural, a little natural. A little pout. He has a little pout. A little pout. A little little sensitive man pout. Yeah. Uh, Nick was just written really bad during that time. I'm hoping if Adam Huss does come back, Nick will be written as Nick again. I think that the likelihood of that is pretty good. I want that. I think that the uh, the current uh, the current attention uh, being placed on, you know, uh, more traditional takes of characters uh, from GH past, I think is going to be continued to be honored. I mean, I mean, I don't have to continue to go over the list, but I could you if you want me to. What one that thing that came up in social media this week? I saw that. Um, somebody concerned about or 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 just putting some some uh, notice about you know these sixty something year old grandparents raising a child. Uh. <laughs> right? Yeah, I, I mean, you guys, that's an epidemic in our country right now. Hmm. There is tons of grandparents raising their grandchildren. Well, Mom, for a, multiple, for a multitude of reasons, as a representation so of the generation that is responsible it's, for this, it's 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 so commonplace for someone my age to be having a grandchild live with them. What do you think you, your generation is doing wrong as parents? Um, <laughs> every generation does something great not great as parents because we're all just human beings yeah no i i, I mean i say that as a joke thing but it, uh, like your generation raised the parents who are leaving these kids with your generation we made y'all too soft oh you should have been harder on us huh uh, to a certain to a little bit you made us too soft too soft and then we pressed that softness onto our children and we've never been softer I don't think anybody. <laughs> I don't think anybody should be rewarded rewarded uh, because hey, you didn't act like an ass today. But I think it should be honored every day that I don't act like a jerk. Well, that's true. But if you've been an ass for fourteen straight days and then you were good for one, you should not go get something. But I want a Lego, and that's why I was oh, good. You know what I'm saying, though. No? I don't know what you're talking about. Well, that's a base talk. But Heather could be a threat to Ace custody if she declared if she was declared innocent. I don't know. Well, I I think um, yeah, they I think actually they've written Laura recently as too much of an empath. <laughs> too empathetic. A little bit too much. Too too sweet. Too too sweet. Too sweet. Too you know. Too forgiving. Sure, you want to give people a chance, but yeah. don't give them a stupid chance. Ooh, Baby Peely is the Gen Z representation in the in the chat. Remember, please continue to uh, to to let us know what your thoughts are from your vantage point. We've got boomers. We've got silent generation in here somewhere. 
Well, we, you know what? We got latchkey I, kids. I've been, uh, I don't feel like a boomer. Now, they say that up until 1965 was a boomer. I don't feel like a boomer at all. I feel like the 80s. My parents the 80s. were boomers. Yeah, you, no, you, you're, so, you're so close to the end of that. And plus, these years constantly shift. You know, you ask a different source, and they're going to give you a different set of years. That now, I heard this recently, I saw this on actually on, uh, on uh, uh, TikTok. Mm -hmm. All this. That my generation... Is actually the Jones generation. Now, I don't know why they call it Jones. I have no idea. The Jones? Oh, the Jones. And that's it's just a, about seven years that's stuck between the boomers and Z. That's me. Or why? Somewhere with and it's like uh from if you were born from nineteen fifty nine to like nineteen sixty. Oh, Gen X, Gen X. Is that what you feel like? You've like an Xer? Yes, I feel like more of an Xer. Yeah, yeah. Um, Not a baby boomer. That's my parents. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, so in this especially in this my record, parents, since they were only nineteen and twenty-one years old when I was born. Yeah, yeah. No. Yeah, yeah. I get that. I get that. So Gen X, according to this thing that I looked at, starts in nineteen sixty-five, which is only three year three years after you were born, right? You were born in sixty-two. Four. Sixty-one. 61 okay so four years so four years so it really on the cusp um and really yeah. like those first couple of years of your, i don't remember 1986 to 1989 you know no so just because i'm have. just because i'm an 80s baby i'm really you know i'm very much a millennial oh yeah you know so you know i think i think i think you you fall onto that cusp where you're not quite a boomer yeah feel a little more exy i think so just like you know i'm just anyway in any case uh <laughs> keeping up with the joneses uh laura doesn't seem like she's doing yes, much I, you're right yep. i did hear that reference yes keeping up with the joneses oh joneses which i don't agree with that kind of yuppie crap at all i don't give a crap what y'all have <laughs> uh looks like we got a lot of gen x in here so you're you're filled with your your peers and contemporaries absolutely uh, rochelle millennial I believe a proud latchkey kid or no Gen X, Gen X, but at the other end of the Gen X. Mm. Mm -hmm. I was totally a latchkey kid. You guys, I started, my mom worked graveyard. So she started work at midnight and she got off at 7.00 AM. I started spending five nights alone in my home. My brother and I, he's two years younger than me. I started spending nights alone five nights a week when I was 15, when my parents split. Mm -hmm. that's when I started spending those nights alone. And you know what? My mom could, 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 she could count on me being exactly where I said I was going to be. And I didn't have no GPS on my butt. Right. You were just or responsible. anything else. I was just not going to do something stupid. See, uh, baby Peely is confident that a generation lasts 15 years. And that sounds like, a, that, that sounds fair. That's enough time to pass for that generation to, I mean, you shouldn't, but... Uh, you try to avoid it if you can, but that's enough time for that generation to start having their own kids. Yeah. Try to avoid it though. <laughs> avoid it, but it's mm -hmm. enough time passed. So that, that, you know, that, that, that does make a little bit of sense. Makes to sense. Me. <laughs> Apparently boomers though, uh, lasted like three of those 15 years periods. Uh, so it looks like from the years that Sandra just shared boomers from 46 to 64. Um, so, you know, that's 20 years. That's a long time. Um, yeah. And really, the huge cultural shift between 46 and 64. Holy smokes. Oh, it's like not even, the, we're not even the same species. Yeah, like, yeah, not even the same <laughs> world, really, between right? those two. So, yeah, that probably should have been split in two. Mm -hmm. You know, the boomers just after uh, World War II ended. GI Bill, everybody has a house to move into. Everybody's been separated from their wives for years. Everybody thinks that they were going to die, so they come back. Baby boom. Literally. And birth control pills weren't around till 1963. Baby boom. Mm -hmm. uh, then it goes to basically, yeah, uh, basically the year of birth control and then Vietnam. Mm -hmm. In which all of these boomers went to war. Uh, again. Um, I don't know, you know, so goodness. Goodness gracious. Yeah, it probably should have been split into that Vietnam generation probably maybe needs a different name. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, there was a little sliver in time there, like, you know, uh, 
when my dad was in the service. Mm -hmm. World War II was clearly over. Yeah. Uh, and Korea was over. Uh, and Vietnam hadn't started yet. Mm -hmm. As soon as they started talking about Vietnam, and my dad got the hell out of the Navy. Like, nope. <laughs> nope, nope, nope. I'm a done. I'm a done. Tell him, cat. We lived in New Jersey. My mom worked in Manhattan, so she didn't get home until about 6.30. So I was home for about three and a half hours alone, mm -hmm. says Rochelle. But she survived. Sure. You know what? Only, the only we had some afternoons like that, too, my brother and I. And the only thing that would go wrong is my brother would just eat everything. <laughs> Put down the sandwich, please. My brother would come home from school. He'd make, he'd like, he, the whole oven was, he, he would take one whole loaf of bread, one whole light, loaf of white bread, and make cinnamon toast out of it. Put a little butter and some white sugar and some cinnamon. Put that in there and toast it on one side on the broiler and eat the entire loaf. <laughs> Don't and here I am, little chubby Kathy, and Stop. here's Sticky Billy. You're like, you, you jerk. Man, I just want you to jerk. <laughs> uh, baby Peely is very lucky. They don't pay taxes their own bills yet. You youngin. You youngin. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. And do what Chandra said. Say what you can. I know. Listen. Listen. I know. I know. I know. I know, baby Peely. I know. I know. I sound like dad. But if you can, it's really nice to have it. Like, really? It doesn't seem like it now. It seems ridiculous and stupid. You've got 100,000 years to live. Why save my money now? I'm not going to retire. 60 is so far off. It's not. Be scared, baby Peely. Be scared of the encroaching march of time. I tell you what, man, there's some fear out there. I don't want to be eating those can of friskies when I'm 80. I can't have nothing else. Oh. That's a real stick there. <laughs> <laughs> Slow encroaching stump. I mean, I'm a, I'm a cat and all, but I don't want to eat your cat food. Constantly <laughs> walking behind you, reminding you that it's there. Okay. The worst soap oh, villain of all time. The worst villain of all time. Matt. Yeah. Anything from Poor Charles that we need to still discuss? Oh, I don't know, Ma. You know, you know how we do here on the tenth floor. Um, let's see. Paulina's radio. Act oh no, that's the wrong one. <laughs> that's Days, <Dave's> babe. <laughs> hey everybody, check out Days of Our Lives. Um, so so Paulina Price play. Uh, Paulina Price has played by Jack A. Uh, mm -hmm. she she's going. Jack uh, A. Harry. Uh, yeah, she's under from Sister Sister Fame, Room Two Two Seven, I think. She is under the character is undergoing a radio uh, radiation therapy for her thyroid cancer. Yes. Um, she's just in a bed. She's recovering. She's fine. Mm -hmm. The show has people in protective suits around her. Uh, people are in town talking about it, in which famous Marlena. Everybody knows Marlena, right? Uh huh. Deidre Hall. She's mm -hmm. talking to somebody in the pub, and she's like. Lead us radioactive. And with real conviction. Like, radioactive. As if as if she is a problem to the city. As if she's about to be a nuclear reactor about to melt down. <laughs> when she's just getting radiation therapy. It's ridiculous fun, so check it out. Yeah. And then join us every week at nine AM Pacific time as we talk about it on Days for Dummies. Mm -hmm. in which we talk about the show and we talk about life and we talk about any other number of different things that pop up because that's what we do We don't here. stay on the rails there any better than we do here. No, no, I don't think so. And I, I, I don't know, um, you know, I have to, uh, what I need to do, I'll just focus. I need to watch some, some, ten, uh, from some GH Mini Spotlight because I feel like they're pretty on topic through the whole thing. <laughs> uh, I'm not though. We're not. But hey, come here for the charm, everybody. Um, <laughs> uh, Sean just says TJ. Uh, TJ gave us more time. He talked to to Marshall. Um, he let us know what he felt. He's been feeling this whole time and has kept it secret. Um, there's not a whole lot to say. I don't think about it at this point because what we have done in that scene is just kind of establish where TJ's head is going forward through the stories, mm -hmm. informing us of uh, emotions 
thoughts, concerns. TJ is concerned about he and Molly's relationship, Mm -hmm. how honest they are and straightforward they are with each other. Mm -hmm. And he's concerned about Christina being Christina. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Uh, He's he's got more misgivings to this, uh, all this than he originally let on, all that kind of stuff. You can call it a retcon. You can call it a rewrite. You can call it whatever you want. Mm -hmm. I'm going to call it a fact because that's what they told us. So, uh, in fact, he had misgivings and had kept them quiet and was supporting Molly during this time. But as time marches on and things progress and Shani, Sunny gets shot at, he's yeah. feeling less confident about it and feeling like he maybe should have said something before getting yeah. this deep into it. And he also agrees yeah, with before Jordan. He had it, before yeah. he had his kiddo in his sister-in-law's belly. Right. And he agrees with Jordan and he agrees with Alexis that Christina probably wasn't the best choice. When it comes to you can't cut ties. Right. The whole can't cut ties. Now, does it make, does it kind of make sense? Sure. It kind of makes sense because, you know, yes, this baby is going to be very related to both. of them. This is his and Christina's kid. It is his and Christina's kid. There is no way around it. There is no way around it. And Christina is already having maternal feelings. Yeah. yeah. Even she if was, she's suppressing them. She was very careful in her conversation with Blaze to make sure that she said, I don't have kids. Yes. Like it was very, like you could, you could tell the carefulness in making sure that she yes. phrased it like that. It, but it wasn't a natural verbiage. It was no. a thought out, planned yes, It was, I need to make sure that I refer to it as this so I don't continue to convince myself that this is my baby. Because she's feeling like it is. Exactly. Exactly. Does Sonny have a problem remembering his lines for years? He seems like he's searching all the time. We just talked about it, Blink. It's engagement. He's doing a lot better. Mm-hmm. Uh, TJ should have stole, stood his ground earlier, says Sindis. This is a baby we're talking about, not a, not whose career comes first or something. And you're right, Sindis, and I think that he would agree with you at this point. Yes, I think he's having a little bit of regret. It's not, you know, misgivings uh, is... Just going al- be, but with just going going along with this so easily. Yeah, misgivings is probably the wrong word for it. More like regret, like you said. Or, uh, shoot, just straight up knowing that he made a mistake. Yeah. You know? And he's, he's, he's hoping for the best, but I think he really can see what could go really wrong. Hmm. Mm-hmm. 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 David wants to know if there's any confirmation of the budget cuts. Uh, hell no. Just the opposite, actually. Yep. Yeah. We heard Disney's throwing down a little more money. <laughs> uh, just the option. Uh, 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 just, just, just the opposite. You know, I, I, I don't know what the number is. I can't tell you that. Oh, last year they were dealing with this, and this year they were dealing with that. Uh, but no, there, there's no, there's no cuts, no slashes uh, when it comes to it. Um, if, if you see any sort of readjustment of staff or any elimination of characters on TV, it's reallocation of available funds, not necessarily adjusting to a smaller budget. I agree. I agree. And we don't know who else is going to be showing their mug on there soon. Mm-mm. This you is know? just the beginning there of Jason's return. There might be some return. new characters coming on soon. Yeah, this is just the beginning of Jason's return. And mm. there's a whole big unanswered two-year question of and what it know, is that he was up to. You know that that um, Jason's got some baggage. We just don't know what it is yet. He's been doing something besides just playing FBI dude for two years. Yeah. He's been doing something else. There's got to be something in his personal life that they're not showing us yet. Yes. Yeah, there's a whole mess of stuff. He could have a whole other family out there that he had to pretend to love or something that we don't know about. He could have a two-year-old. Oh, uh, yeah. And he's been living with that two-year-old? Oh, boy. There'd be a <laughs> couple of mom and baby mamas in town pissed. Uh, um, Blink, Blink uh, is asking for more clarification uh, when it comes to um, the, the stuttering Sonny. You know, if that's if that's character choice, if that's actor, what, what, what exactly? Um I I don't think it's necessarily a character choice. I think the difference between Maurice Bernard on State of Mind versus on General Hospital is on State of Mind, he's speaking his own words and thoughts. Mm -hmm. And on General Hospital, he's speaking somebody else's words and thoughts. And so there's just a little bit more of a disconnect when it comes to the portrayal of it because it's... it's... When he's on State of Mind, he's being Mo. Yeah. When he's on General Hospital, he's being Sunny. Right. So yeah, the 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 way he speaks... Is going to be different. 
Mm -hmm. And if there's a lack of confidence in the words that are coming out of his mouth or something like that, when he is sunny, it's because he he didn't come up with them. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people, you know, kind of run into this. Or maybe he didn't look at that script hard enough. Or maybe he didn't look at the script hard enough. Or he's at the point, too, in which he understands the gist of it. Like a lot of these actors do. Yes. You know, like Anna doesn't say what's written for her. No. A lot of them. Of course, they say what's written and convey of the story. Yeah, but they convey the same idea. Her. It's not the words exactly on the page. Right. Right. I mean, not everybody does that, but some do. Some do. Um, some do. Now, yeah. some of them, some of them do exactly say what's on the page. The really, really seasoned ones that have been playing that character for decades, Don't. those they add livers as much. Yep, 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 yep. Anna, Tristan Rogers, um, Laura, uh, not right. Ken Schreiner. Collins, Ken Schreiner. Um, a lot of these actors are, are pretty well known for uh, getting the idea across but not saying the exact words or saying something that's very similar or rephrasing something in a way that they feel their character might say more naturally. Um but oh my god like i'll tell the story until i die following through the tristan rogers um genie francis finola hughes scene with the script in my hand and watching what it is that they did on screen and how they had the exact same scene but it wasn't written that way Mm -hmm. was incredible they had the exact same scene they talk about the exact stuff they got the point across they hit the emotional beats they gave the information that we were supposed to have, but none of those lines, none of that structure was what was written. And it was incredible to follow mm-hmm. along. Very fun, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Very fun. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's all the time that we got, though. That's all the time. It's past one. You know what? I have... Um, so here, it is. tomorrow's tax day, right, guys? Mm-hmm. My eldest son... Wrote his daddy and I a text a couple hours ago and said, Uh, did y'all buy TurboTax? <laughs> so he's gonna he's gonna come on over and take over the uh the production studio from you. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. And we so we told him, sure, you know, you can come on over, but <laughs> mom's busy with the computer until about 1 30. Uh, Jeannie setting a fire here before we go out. I just want to put everybody's mind at ease. Uh, speaking of Tristan, I hope he's okay, says Jeannie, obviously referring to his voice. Uh, you, you know, you guys, I saw, I saw stuff on social media about it, uh, you know, and uh, of course we did, I don't have any conclusion because I read nothing. Right. It said, you know, Tristan Rogers, blah, blah, blah. Read mm-hmm. nothing. But yes, you'd um, have to be not looking at the television at all to not see Tristan was he's not he's not looking like he did last time we saw him on no he's he's a little skinnier and his voice is is is, is hoarser you know he's a challenge um I've asked the questions I talked to the people who are in the know I was I was curious you know if we need to be prepared mentally for any sort of announcement that might be coming uh and the answer is no um the answer is He's just really old. But it, I, but, but it it's was. not, it, you know, he doesn't like, there's, there's, there's nothing diagnosed. There's nothing right. growing. There's nothing wrong. Right. You know, so to speak, he's just old. But there, but I understand what you guys are talking about yeah. because there was a frailty mm-hmm. that was not there before. Right. With that we saw in the last two scenes we saw of Tristan. <laughs> There was a frailty on screen that was so noticeable mm-hmm. that it's, we didn't see. It's it's that. it's 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 really his it's it's the age. Um, and Tristan Rogers classically, um, you know, with the hard 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 rock and life. Mm-hmm. You know, he was basically a soap rock star. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, but there's 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 not you know don't prepare yourself for an announcement. There's not going to be uh, any sort of like diagnosis that you know hits the sheets. Nothing that I know of, at least. Um, no. It's just, it's just, it's a simple matter of just the man continuing to get up there in age. Yeah. And, and, you know, and if there is something wrong with him that we don't know about, well, okay. That could be his case as well. Mm-hmm. But weren't we all shocked that Jackie passed away? Yeah. Yeah. We were, we were, we were. Uh, but you know, if you take a look at days of our lives and watch Roman Brady in the, in the pub that he runs, um, mm-hmm. his, his you know, he doesn't sound anywhere like he did when he was younger. No. Nothing at all like he did. No. So, 
uh, you know, just a, just a fact of life that things happen. So, you know, don't worry about too much about it. Uh, not just voice, he's really sent and thin, says Jeannie. Yeah, you know. I understand. I'm not, you know, I'm not saying don't feel emotions, but, you know, also at the same time, you know, don't, of course, of don't, course. you know, there, there's nothing to get riled up about, really. You know, it's not like, no, oh. No, there isn't. Yeah. There's nothing to get riled up, up about unless that we find out there is. But I do understand what you guys are talking about. Mm -hmm. And I did, and I did have um, a level of concern when I watched those couple of episodes going, oh, what the no, and I think everybody did, really. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. It's okay. But even then, like, Diane sounds like she's got the flu, you know, like. Sometimes these things just come up. Yep. Yeah, concern is all, Jeannie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I want to be able to, to, you know, abate any any sort of additional stress beyond. Oh, my! One of my favorite actors is is getting older. You know. Yeah. Well, we don't. You know, we don't want to. We don't know nothing, but we don't want to make up stories either. Yeah, so. yeah. You don't want to fan a <laughs> fan a fake fire like you know. Michael Easton is out. He's been shown the door. He's been thrown out of the gate, and they locked it. They changed the code. You know. <laughs> uh. Anyway. Anyway, uh, let's get out of here. Get back onto the elevator, folks. Go back down to the first floor. Okay, we're getting out of here. We're leaving. Go to your car. Turn your radio to previous episodes into the 10th floor, which you can find on all of your favorite podcasting platforms. If you can't find it on your favorite podcasting platform, you can reach out to me on Twitter, and I will send you in the right direction. The handle on Twitter, 10th floor GH, 10th th floor GH. Enjoy the soap conversation that we have all week long as well. Days of Our Lives, General Hospital. Next week we'll be back, 9 a.m. for Days for Dummies. 11 a.m., these are Pacific Times, for 10th Floor Podcast, General Hospital. Yes. And you might even see us on a Thursday night every once in a while. 10 p.m. Eastern for Late Night Tonight. Oh, Chandra, so. Chandra once suggested that we do a Jeff Cooper show where we talk about all of our favorite Jeff Cooper roles. You can talk about Sons of Anarchy. I would, but I would have to like look some of his stuff up. He was a scary, menacing thing on there. Oh yeah, yeah. Watch some good, 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 uh, menacing son of Zeb Anarchy YouTube clips. I can send you a Star Trek clip from when he was on Voyager. It was a long time ago. And then we can, you know, find some just really old, like like B movie footage of him as a young man early in his career. You know what he was on? He was on for a couple of seasons. It's a long time ago now. China Beach. Yeah. Oh, that was his big thing, right? That was kind of his big. That was his Main, like, mainstream break, break. That was his breakup thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Anyway, we'll figure it out. But pay attention. You know, subscribe to the channel. You get notified when we go live and when there's a new video available. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, go ahead. Don't don't not. Don't miss nothing. Don't miss nothing. You know, you never know where we're gonna pop up. Plus, you know, uh, uh, Kelly already promised she didn't. Uh, that she was going to start sending us a video updates of all the zooms that she does, and so she's going to start updating us fans with little five minute updates on the channel that she that she didn't promise us that she was going to do. <laughs> you know. <laughs> uh, oh, Chandra says thanks to for joining us all, first timers. Tell folks about the yes, live show. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Yeah, I appreciate you being here. Hopefully you liked it enough to be back next week. Uh, thank you very much for the, uh, the donations. We got, the you got chat. lots of old crud if you want to watch it. Oh, yeah. Just, we got, uh, probably got over 100 videos now. Mm hmm So go and check that out. Little interviews from Red Carpet as well. Yeah. And we actually have, and there's a couple of interviews in there too. Yeah, Brett's, yeah, yeah. Remington yeah, Hoffman, Brett's Tanisha Harper. Show. We've had um, uh, Arlandria Lignier. Yes, we have. Who plays Nika. Yes, we had yeah. her on. Vincent Rosari was on our All My Children special. There's lots to do anyway. I'm just killing time. Goodbye. <laughs> Go spend some time with your families. I've been Matt. I've been Kat. We'll catch you next week right here on the 10th floor. Goodbye. Bye.